All right, so Kathy touched on this. Obviously, the big story is O.J. Simpson passed away. He was 76 years old. I think we're going to expand on that a yep, little bit more yep, yep. later, but not at this point in time. Apparently died uh, after battling uh, prostate cancer. Um, so, he, you know, he had a he had a strong run in, and this is the entertainment news, in the world of entertainment with the Naked Gun movies and the commercials and all that stuff. And I'm, I'm going to, listen, he was very good yeah. in the Naked Gun stuff. There's yeah. no two ways about it. He was also in the Towering Inferno. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, obviously, we'll cover a little bit more of that stuff uh, later on because we've got to talk about all the things that came with, uh, you know, him and the, the trial and all the things. OJ. All the joy. So, we'll get to that stuff uh, a little bit later on this morning. Um, here's another story. It's been six years since Jenna Dewan and Chan uh, Channing Tatum announced their split. I can't believe it's been that long. I know. And uh, still tears me up. They're still trying to work out their divorce. What? Uh, it seems that they've divided over a technical settlement, which includes Tatum's profits from his Magic Mike movies. Uh, the former couple has a hearing scheduled for today with court documents showing the key issues for the trial are the division of property, reimbursement claims, uh, support breach of fiduciary duty, and attorney's fees. So she claims that their case is ongoing because her ex won't accept an equal division of the Magic Mike intellectual property, among other issues. According to the documents, she wants him to testify regarding all issues related to the party's marriage, including business and financial activities, while the court, court documents filed by Tatum's attorney show that Dewan and her fiancé, Steve Kazee, on his witness list. So she alleges that Channing did not inform her about Magic Mike business opportunities and collected 100% of the profits after they separated. So, okay, that would be a problem. Now, they could work this out if she were to share half her profits from flirty dancing. Oh, maybe. Maybe they haven't considered yeah, that Yeah, they yet. haven't even considered that. But I guess he was working on this stuff. It yeah. was going on in the background. They were still married. He didn't tell her about it and tried to kind of just take that all, which is like, uh, I guess you can't do that. I yeah. don't know. Uh, it seems like she might have a case. Now, he disputes the claim. Uh, uh, oh. Yeah, so they're going to they're gonna hash it out in court. Uh, Tatum and Dewan tied the knot in 2009. She filed for divorce in October 2018, and a judge declared them uh, legally single in November 2019. Uh, they have a daughter together, 10-year-old Everly. While the former couple is still working on financial details, they reached a custody agreement about their daughter back in January of 2020. I mean, they're both doing well. She's He's with uh, Zoe Kravitz, and yeah. uh, her, her dude is a, like a billionaire. Yeah. Prince William. And his mother-in-law, Carol Middleton, were reportedly seen together at a local pub. Oh. Uh, but Princess Kate was not with them. Uh, a source said, I'm told he popped into a pub in North Norfolk at the weekend with his mother-in-law, who is said to have been staying with Prince Princess of Wales yes. for Easter. Two sloppy joes, please. And, <laughs> and make them extra sloppy. Oh, the kids like them like that. <laughs> yeah. don't they? Uh, he, I made them extra sloppy, please. <laughs> uh, he uh, apparently... Uh, note said a patron, uh, he said a, a patron was uh, at the pub, said that it was all very low key. Oh, so, so like maybe the they were having yeah. some shows. I don't know. <laughs> Did you guys uh, see the episode of The Crown this year where they uh, dive into her past? And um, I have to, I, you, you, uh, you actually turned my uh, opinion about checking it out around. Um, yeah. I, I will investigate it because I, I really do enjoy the series. You'll and, like it, Steve. Yeah, it, good, good. And they spend a lot of time with her and her influence on Kate and how Kate ended up with William. And some of it was very manipulated by the mother uh, if you uh, take the crown at its work. right it's a great episode and uh, and i had no idea that any of these things happened uh kate and william did not join other members of the royal family when they celebrated easter at church the couple reportedly enjoyed a holiday privately with their children who's up for sloppy chairs mm. uh george lucas will receive an honorary palm door at the con film festival next month festival organizers announced uh he will be honored at the closing ceremony to the 77th French Film Festival on May 25th. He joins a short list of those to receive honorary palms. Last year, Harrison Ford was awarded one. Other recent recipients include Michael Douglas, Tom Cruise, Forrest Whitaker, and Jodie Foster. Uh, he said in a statement, the Festival de Cannes has always held a special place in my heart. 
I was surprised and elated when my first film, THX 1138, was selected to be shown in a new program for the for, for first-time directors called The Director's Fortnite. And since then, I've returned to the festival on many occasions in a variety of capacities as a writer, director, and producer, and I'm truly honored by the special recognition. I think of this dude years ago in California, you know, with all these guys who are coming up, Coppola and John Milius. He, he really loved working on his car, had a fascination with film, kind of got into it a little bit later. And uh, and uh, I mean, look at look at the empire he created. There, there, somewhere, Literally. somewhere, there's a photo. I remember seeing this a while back, and it's like him and as kids, yes. him and Steven Spielberg and Martin Scorsese, and they're like shooting pool, right? And they're hanging out. I'm, yeah, yeah, like the all biggest of, of the bigs. Yes, all <laughs> in their early twenties, uh-huh. just hanging out, being. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. So here's a here's an interesting story. This is how close they were when Coppola was cutting. The Godfather, um, it, it would be uh, um, Lucas. He said, well, how, does, how does this feel to you? And the whole sequence in the hospital, um, Coppola had, had it cut a different way. And he goes, you know what you should probably do? To make the, uh, the situation Michael is in feel more heavy, do you have any stock footage of just the empty hallways? Mm. And, and he goes, yeah. And th that whole sequence, dung, yeah. dung, where they're waiting for the guys to come and he's yeah. trying to protect. I, you, you, don't, you know who my father is? That was heightened because of a George Lucas suggestion. Okay. It's amazing. Built all the tension yeah, yeah, in yeah. it. Wow, that's really cool. I so. mean, that's pretty awesome because you, you figure, all right, here's somebody who, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, right? yeah. That he's even open to, to suggestions. Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the Cotton Film Festival runs May 14th through the 25th. And by the way, uh, Francis Ford Coppola's long-awaited film Megalopolis is set to premiere there as Francis. well. Uh, it will star Adam Driver and Giancarlo Esposito. It's about uh, a talking dragon, right? Uh, no, uh -oh. the movie That's follows dragon, uh, the clash between an ambitious architect and the city's mayor over conflicting visions for the future with uh, Nathaniel Emmanuel. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Natalie. Natalie, thank you. We've had her. Uh, on. Natalie Manuel uh, playing the mayor's daughter caught in the middle. We did? Yeah, she's um, she was the hot chick from uh, Game of Thrones, and then she was in uh, the uh, safe cracking movie. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah Zack yeah, yeah, Snyder. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, Army. Oh, she is sensational. Yeah. Army of Thieves. Yeah, yes. she was wonderful. Um, yeah, she, and she's stunning. Yeah. Uh, Coppola, who initially wrote the script in the 1980s, invested over $100 million of his own money yeah. into the production to bring the vision to life. Uh, the star-studded cast includes Dustin Hoffman, Chloe Fineman, and uh, newcomer Bailey Ives. Um, it's got mixed reviews, but, of course, he's got a great track record. So He does. We'll and it do it At this point, it doesn't matter because he is fabulously wealthy from his wine. Mm -hmm. uh, three popular Melrose-placed original cast members, Heather Locklear, Laura Leeton, and Daphne Zuniga, are returning for a follow-up to the 1990s staple. Are you down, Kathy? Yeah, sure. Yeah. A Melrose Place reboot with the trio attached to stars in development at CBS Studios and is currently being shopped to networks and streamers. They're going to get Marsha it... Cross. Or, does she die in that? Well, no, remember she came back. I know, but did she die after at that? Because the... no, that was one of the greatest moments think... in television. I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, right. th wait, so they haven't done this before? Uh, they had another Melrose Place. But that they, did none a of the original were in yeah, it. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, the new Melrose Place picks up years after the original series and would provide an update on the beloved characters, uh, one of whom may no longer be with us. It's ah, uh -huh. it's called Moonbase Melrose. In the new installment, no, when one of the, their dearest friends dies suddenly, uh, the OG residents of Melrose Place gather to honor the deceased, but the pressure cooker of a reunion soon uncovers old traumas, rekindles Ooh. old romances, Ooh, reunites old resentments, and reveals new secrets. <laughs> Throwing our characters into a chaotic drama that is reminiscent of the past, but with a much more modern perspective. I love Laura Leighton too, the the redhead. Yeah, yeah, she was uh, she was a bomb thrower. I, I like oh, her she a was lot. saucy, Preston. Uh, I love Daphne Zuniga. Daphne really? Zuniga was yeah. great. Okay. You know, I, Case, the jury, um, me personally, used to yeah. be out on her, but yeah. over time, I found her adorable. By the way, she is the, uh, in the movie, The Sure Thing, she is the yes. the, the the better option. Correct. Yeah, that he She's finally realizes. That yeah. travels with him. Right, right. And it's yeah. kind of the, the nerdier, yeah, but I, she, I, they fall in love. She was a doll back then. Yeah. I'll watch this. I'll give this a chance, because I liked the 90210 reboot um, with some of the old cast members, and if, if they do it similarly, I, I liked that. I was, I didn't. I thought they should have gone on with that. Uh, Kathy, you come over, we'll drink wine and, and work on succulents together. We'll okay. <laughs> but those are my two shows, 90210 and Melrose Place. Those yep. were your two? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> let me see what else I have here for you. I'm trying to... I have a lot here. Um, Scary Movie 
is coming back. Paramount Pictures is giving the movie series uh, that spoofed horror movies like Scream, and I don't, and I know what you did last summer, a reboot. Uh, the studio has announced that they are teaming up with Fast and Furious producer Neil Moritz uh, to bring back the comedy franchise. They had the, the guys from um, some of the Airplane uh, alums, like Pat Proft and, and uh, other guys had worked on the ones. Once it was taken away from the Waynes brothers, uh, and I'm, I'm, I've always kind of liked those movies. Uh, production for Scary Movie is set to begin this fall, and the film is expected to be in theaters 2025. The last film in the series came out. Uh, it was Scary Movie 5. It was a decade ago in 2013. So since then, a lot of horror movies have seen huge box office success, including Five Nights at Freddy's, Smile, and Megan. So there's a lot to parody. Yeah. They've got a lot of material. And that's they really ran, what it is. They ran out of material to parody. So. Right, right. Yeah. In, spe in fact, speaking of Five Nights at Freddy's, um, it's getting a sequel in the fall of 2025. Uh, Universal Pictures and Bloomhouse Productions, which uh, backed the first film, confirmed the news at CinemaCon. Uh, they didn't share the exact release date, plot details, of returning cast members uh, for the follow-up. Sorry, I watched it finally. Uh, I It was okay. Yeah. Uh, I think it needed to be, if you're going to keep it in line with the video game, it needed to be a little bit more bloody. It's okay. not. It's not really. Uh, so it made a killing at the box office. $297 million globally became Blumhouse's highest grossing film of all time. Uh, the ticket sales were especially impressive because the low-budget film was getting terrible reviews, and it landed simultaneously on Peacock as well, but it still yeah. did really well for them. It's amazing. That's the thing about scary movies. People want to go to the movie theater to see Yes, those. they you want the communal I mean? thing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, for most movies, hybrid releases tend to cut into ticket sales, but it didn't seem to hurt Five Nights which benefited from its PG-13 rating and prime Halloween release date as well. Uh, here's another thing. Transformers and G.I. Joe are officially... They're officially getting a crossover movie. G.I. Joe, well, it was okay. At, apparently it was hinted at in the last Transformers movies. <laughs> uh, movie Transformers Rise of the Beast. All right. Um, and a post credit scene. So this isn't the first time that two Hasbro properties have uh, crossed over. The movie is based on the 80s comic book uh, published by Marvel that was backed by toy company Hasbro. No director is attached at this time. Steven Spielberg is acting as an executive producer for the crossover as well. But they made the announcement also at CinemaCon. Yeah, I tapped out pretty quick. I mean, I, the, the first Transformer movie was, was pretty cool. Wow, they were able to pull that off. And then the second one had some fun. And then... It's like, okay, uh, I think I'm done. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Kathy, did you watch the second season of Bridgerton? I did. Uh, the third season um, is offering up a glimpse of what is to come. They had a trailer that came out yesterday. Uh, Netflix official season three synopsis reads, Penelope enters season three, finally ready to give up her longtime crush on Colin. Uh -huh. However, that doesn't mean she's done with love. Instead, Penelope has decided that it's time to take a husband and preferably... One who will give her the freedom to continue her double life as Lady Whistledown. Lady Whistle, Whistle, Whistlebound? Whistledown. Whistledown. Oh, so Lady for the Whistledown. Fir the first season, it was a big mystery who she was, and then it was revealed, so now they're going to focus on her. Lady yep. Whistledown, your carriage awaits. <laughs> uh, and so she'll be able to live the double life far away from the prying eyes of her mother and sister. Uh, season three will include a total of eight episodes that are split into two parts. Uh, the first four episodes premiere May 16th, and the next four debut June 13th. Wow, only eight? Yeah. Well, have you been a... Were you happy with the second season? I was very happy with the second season. Even though the uh, the main dude... The guy left. Yeah. They did a really good job. They focused on a brother. They brought in this beautiful woman that he ended up marrying. Uh, and, you know, it was revealed who Whistledown was. I, I was really happy with All it. Right. And uh, I think... This makes sense to focus on her because now you want to know, you know, about her and, and why she's writing this stuff. And, okay. you know, she's kind of different than her family. Her family but, is very, you know, all about money and finding someone to marry and all that. And she, you know, she wants to get married, but she's not necessarily like her family. Do so. they continue more independent? To, it, yeah, very do they much. continue to incorporate the music, uh, contemporary yep, music? Yep, okay. Yeah. That's a cool thing about that. I only I watch it. a couple episodes, but you're watching and you're hearing uh, these strings playing a song. You're like... What is, is that? Is that Nirvana? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. So, um, SWAT, the TV show that follows a uh, SWAT team in Los Angeles, was originally planning to call it quits with season seven, but has reportedly been renewed for an eighth season with 22 episodes. Your wife must be thrilled. Shamar Moore. Yeah, that's your mm -hmm. man. Loves that guy. Uh, he will star and executive produce. This is uh, the second time that the show has also almost been canceled. Uh, it was canceled before the current season started, and then CBS reversed course 
and gave it a renewal for one last season at the time. And with this new renewal at the last minute, CBS is apparently not going to get ahead of itself and isn't going to call season eight the final season like it did for season seven. And apparently the reason that the show was almost canceled a few times uh, came down to worries about the cost of making TV these days. But it seems that uh, that's all behind uh, the scene. Number crunching stuff has worked out and uh, SWAT is set for one more season. It's pretty wild. At least. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that you don't see that happen. No, once very often. once they they uh, you're done. Yep. Uh, let's see what time is it. I wanted to mention this. I thought this was kind of fun. After things didn't work out for Lavar Burton on becoming the next Jeopardy host, he has a new gig. After a lengthy negotiation process, the CW has reached an agreement with Lavar to host its new game show, Trivial Pursuit. Uh, the original series ran on the Family Channel from 1993 in 1993 and 1994. Uh, the reboot with Burton at the helm has a 12-episode order from the CW. No word uh, yet on when it will premiere. He's also so. going to be uh, one of the producers. Uh, yeah, I like him. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to see him. He get, wasn't. He wouldn't have been a Jeopardy things. fit. He, he, he was good, but he need, you need a little bit more. I think this might work with him. Yeah, yeah, it may very well. And speaking of Jeopardy, one last thing. Uh, Jeopardy Masters is coming back for a second season. The six current highest rank Je rank Jeopardy contestants <laughs> will be featured in the tournament playing uh, two games per hour long episode. Uh, Ken Jennings, of course, returns as host and the show will feature last year's Jeopardy Masters champion uh, James Holzhauer. Returning contestants Matt uh, Omadio and uh, Matea Roach and newcomers Yagesh Rott and Victoria Gross. Grochi? No, G-R-O-C-E. So it's maybe, yeah, that's maybe gross. Grochi. Uh, anyhow, the sixth wild card contestant will be chosen by the show's producers and revealed at the live Inside Jeopardy event in New York, uh, which I think was, that already came out. They, they might have had that yesterday. I like these uh, tournaments, uh, but I, I've never seen as many Jeopardy tournaments that, that they've had over the last two years. Like, it's just almost every other week. It's not just regular Jeopardy. They Too have much. these tour tournaments going on. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm a little... I like the regular stuff. Well, they wrapped up. It, so, so, so we've been we've had it ended on a Tuesday, and they had um, so yesterday and um, um, Wednesday they had um, new players. And Nick, I'm watching, and I'm sorry when you're at tournament level, the 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 questions or the clues are they're, hard. they're formidable. It's harder. Yeah. So, sure. and, and you could see a shift when they return <laughs> to regular contestants. I'm sure uh, because you're dealing with. Heavy, heavy hitters. I have not been watching it enough. It's one of my favorite shows. But uh, Amy, what's her name? Um, you just said it. Uh, no, I didn't. It was a different. Uh, I didn't mention her name in this. But uh, anyway, uh, she was like, yeah, right there. What's her name? Schneider. Amy Schneider. Watching her, it's just like bang, bang, yeah. bang, 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 bang. I'm like, it blows me away that pe when people answer like that on so Jeopardy. The, she was made it down to the finals. Okay. The woman she was competing with. Was better, like un no insane, kidding, insane, wow. wow. And so uh, this woman has actually gone on to be uh, on the show, The Chase. You know, they have the trivia experts. Ken Jennings was on it for a yeah, while. Yeah, she has now gotten a job as one of the masters on that show. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Uh, um, is Matamodio the guy from uh, Ocean City? I oh no, no no wait! I, I just found it. I'm sorry. It's Chris Panulo. Okay. okay, that guy, and he was really really good. But he lost in one of the tournaments recently to. Um, uh, the actor uh, that ended up doing well. Uh, uh, Ronald Reagan? Reagan? Baron Holtz. No, uh, not Ronald Reagan. Oh. Uh, Baron Holtz. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'll take the actor? For, I'll <laughs> take former presidents for 20. Who's uh, Secretary of the State? I don't know. <laughs> Mommy tells me everything. <laughs> All right, there are new movies opening this weekend. Oh. Let us reveal. Opening this weekend, Civil War. It's an action drama. It stars uh, Kirsten Dunst, uh, Wagner Mora, and Kali Spannon, I believe. Uh, so a journey across a dystopian future America follows a team of military embedded journalists as they race against time to reach D.C. before rebel factions descend upon the White House. 
Hour and 49 minutes long. Rated R. Wide theater release. Rotten Tomato score gives it an 84%. So it's from the guy who did Ex Machina and did the script for Dread. Um, he's, a, he's a really interesting filmmaker. So this looks pretty weird. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Arcadian also opens. Uh, it's a horror film starring Nicolas Cage, uh, Jaden Martell, Maxwell Jenkins. In a near future, Life on Earth was... Uh, uh, was been decimated, has been decimated. There we go. Uh, Paul and his twin teenage sons, Thomas and Joseph, have been living a half-life tranquility by day and torment by night. And when the sun sets, ferocious creatures of the night awaken and consume all living souls in their path. One day, when Thomas doesn't return home before sundown, Paul chooses to leave the safety of their fortified farm to find him before the creatures arrive. Hour and 32 minutes long. Uh, rated R, limited theater release. Rotten Tomatoes, 86%. So this kind of came out of left field, but it looks really good. All right. And then you have Sting. It's a horror film starring Ryan Kaur, uh, Alia Brown, and Penelope Mitchell. When 12-year-old Charlotte... Uh, her pet spider rapidly transforms into a giant flesh-eating monster. <laughs> She's forced to fight for her family's survival. Hour and 31 minutes long rated R wide theater release and Rotten Tomatoes gives it 65%. So everybody scored halfway decent yep, uh, yep. in these movies. So there you go. Lots of stuff to see. Clips. Here we go. Shark Tank has survived 15 seasons through economic highs and lows. And in this clip... Uh, Damon John reflects back on his original business plan for joining the series. Here is the clip. I had 10 clothing companies, and in 08, eight of them were dead. Nobody's buying another shirt when they can't pay their mortgage. But when I go to JCPenney's, I want to take up more real estate. I want to be able to sell them electronics. I want to sell them cosmetics. So where am I going? Oh, wait a minute. I'll go on this show, and I'll get great deals, and I can diversify my portfolio when I come over to them and say, if you don't want this, I got this. If you don't want this, I got that. And I'm going to have built-in millions of dollars worth of advertising. Shut the f*** up. Uh, new episode of Shark Tank <laughs> airs tonight on ABC. Next clip. The newest adult animated series on Netflix follows the fourth generation of the Evans family uh. living in apartment 17C of a Chicago housing project. And in this clip, Rashida Alioa, Aliowala, uh, talks about the producers inviting her to bring her own experiences to her good times character. Here we go. They really wanted this to be as as genuine as possible, and I'm from that. I grew up with hair being done in the basement. Until you get your salon, my cousin, my older cousin, she owns Star Salon on the west side of Chicago. I was a little kid running around and just hearing the conversations and seeing how we as black women helped each other, pull each other up. If somebody didn't have it, they had it. Go down to the corner, get you a honey bun and a pop. Keep the change. I come from that. You yeah. got to finish it. <laughs> All right. And that is our entertainment report this morning, <laughs> friends. All right. We have a lot going on. We got a bunch of concert tickets to give away this morning. Aerosmith, uh, Deep Purple, and yes, uh, the Pearl Jam struts. listening party, the Struts. We got a bunch wow. of them. We're going to do this uh, with the Connoisseur and more. And, of course, we have money to give away, too, with Good Money It. Our good friend, good, uh, Tom Papa, is going to be on the show. Martin Cove. Yes. From the Karate Kid fame. John Kreese, the head of the Cobra Kai, is going to be joining us as well. So a bunch to stick around for. Hang with us on this No Sad Bro Friday because we will be right back. Not your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Thank you very much, Kathy. So, obviously, the big story in the news yesterday, O.J. Simpson dead at the age of 76. Yes. Uh, prostate cancer, apparently, is what I had read. Yes, prostate cancer. What he had suffered from and uh, <clears throat> and died. And, uh, yeah, we were, um, uh, Kathy touched on in the news, we touched on a little bit in the entertainment report, but that was, um, you know, the whole O.J. thing. 
uh, and and by thing I mean starting with the the car, uh, the the chase and the uh, uh, the trial and all the stuff that ensued was just just captivated the American audience. Um, it, it happened at the time, obviously, we weren't all, you know, there was not social media, there was not the online immediacy, but there was still, you had a lot of media covering everything. It was this huge event that, that had so many uh, aspects to it. Uh, you know, from just initially, you were taking a guy who was, if you take him at, at basically who he was prior to all this, he was beloved. Oh, he was, he he was, was a, a legend, a Heisman Trophy winner. He was, he was just... Um, you know, uh, Nordberg. He was, Nordberg. Well, it, he was an American success story, is what he was. He Every was, company he was, wanted him. Absolutely, he to was, endorse. He what? was a he was a good looking. He had this friendly appearance about him. He was insanely talented. He's one of the all time great football players, America's sport. Yes, I mean he was still he holds st records. St stood for yeah. what this country what you can be as a success in this country. Well, and he wasn't on that path at first. He he did some jail time and he got in trouble in high school and, yeah. and there were some people that kind of pushed him to football and said, hey, stay out of trouble. Yeah. And he took that route. He, yeah. he stayed out of trouble. Well, okay. <laughs> he, had a, he had a tough childhood growing up and, and he, you know, there was, there were all sorts of situations. He did manage to get on the straight and narrow, but what happened was when this happened, I'm, we can remember, and there are people who don't remember it at all, who are, you know, who are only aware of it maybe through the, the TV series. Uh, the, the, uh, I remember every bit of it. Hell I remember yeah. every bit of news. I remember seeing him <clears throat> the morning after uh, the crime scene there. Uh, police were talking to him, and, and nothing had floated about the potential that he was, um, you know, the murderer at that point. So he was not convicted in the criminal, but in the civil trial, they found him guilty. Right. Um, so, um, but all of that stuff played out. But I mean, Preston, I remember when the when the news came out about the verdict. I rem oh yeah, the, the trippy dude. We were we were we were huddled around the television. Oh my god! To see well, what was going to happen. It was one of those things where, you, like, I remember where I was. I was in the library of my high school, and they took us out of class to watch the verdict. Okay. So my aunt uh, and uncle and cousins live uh, in Brentwood, and uh, they live in, uh, in between Sunset and San Vicente. And Nicole Brown and uh, Ron Goldman were murdered uh, on Bundy, right off of Bundy. And OJ lived in this neighborhood called Rockingham, which is north of Sunset. My aunt and uh, uncle and their family lived right in between where the murder happened and oh, where OJ lived. And wow. so for two months, there were he helicopters hovering over their house that entire time. Uh, it was it was the biggest story that I can remember, you know, probably like since the Challenger at that time. Like it was such a, it captivated the nation. And so um, if he did it, which I believe he did, yeah. uh, uh, I think most people do at this point anyway, he, when he, after murdering them, he drove uh, right past my aunt's house back to Rockingham. I mean, like, it, the the celebrities that came out of that It trial, became, it became, oh, yeah. it became, well, Kato Judge Ito. Judge Ito. I mean, yeah. Rob, the, we wouldn't have the car Kardashians. Robert Kardashian yes. became famous yeah, in large right. part and rich because he was OJ's uh, tri uh, trial lawyer in the criminal trial. By the yeah. way, it was Robert Kardashian who many people believe um, squirreled away the bloody clothing. And that was he, they believe that he might have been the one who disposed of bloody clothing. The, the Card, uh, Kardashian yes, did? that has always been the rumor. Uh, my uncle was, he was a consultant on the case. He wasn't part of the team. He's a lawyer. He wasn't part of the team, but he, he was one of their consultants that worked um, with some of the, the lawyers on for his defense. So you're talking, so listen, if you want to see what money can get you, and, and don't make no mistakes about it, OJ was very wealthy at the time. F. Lee Bailey, Alan Dershowitz, Robert Shapiro... Uh, all of these guys, but of course, the superstar of the collective was Johnny Cochran. Mm -hmm. And Johnny Cochran, if you read Vincent Bugliosi, he was the guy who was able to convict Manson, uh, Manson on essentially circumstantial evidence. Right. Um, the stuff that comes out in that book is pretty amazing. For example, the 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 the, the iconic shift moment in the trial was the the gloves thing. Prior to that, and they knew they were going to do it, they always say a lawyer should never ask a question he doesn't know the answer to, shouldn't do something that he doesn't know how to play out in court. OJ was taking medication for arthritis. He had him stop taking his medication like a week and a half <clears throat> prior to that, so his so fingers would, would be swell. inflamed. Come yes. on, yeah. Um, I there were heard that. there were things uh, that I forgot though. I w as I was reading about it, like I I forgot that he there was someone in the car with him. He wasn't driving. Yeah. Al Collins. Al Collins um, was yeah. driving, and yeah. that he was holding a gun to yeah. to his head, saying he was going to kill himself if, mm -hmm. if they didn't take him, uh, if his friend didn't take him to his house. Like mm -hmm. I I forgot these things. Yeah, that's why it was seemed so tense. 
with the, the yeah. because he he was on the phone. There's audio of him saying, "This is AC. I'm here with OJ. He's got a gun. Yeah. I'm driving him." And it was like, I remember. And Nick, you had mentioned, you know, the Challenger. This, the Challenger, nine eleven. O.J. Simpson, they all fall within the same, the same category time, right? of, of yeah. captivation. Of, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry, of, of, of grabbing the nation because, like you said, Steve, it was before social media, and my girlfriend at the time had called me. It's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm, I'm playing, you know, I was playing a video game or whatever. She's like, turn on your TV, TV. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right now. This crazy thing is going down, and, the, and what was nuts about it was... And the reason we were so captivated, two, two, a couple of reasons. Number one, it was, like I said, it was like an American hero at the time, O.J. Simpson. Uh, you had the murders and everybody was like, well, I don't know what to think about that. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, my God, this dude may kill himself on live television and they, we will be watching this. Which, by the way, to many indicated that he had done it. He was remorseful and he didn't know. He, he that's what I didn't want to go on and face. Yeah. And that all, that's when the dream team descends around him and says, we're going to shift this, buddy. Um, but that's what every person, we were celebrating my birthday. We're having a birthday dinner in a restaurant, right? So we're sitting there and suddenly the TV set goes on. I'm in a, I'm have like meatballs <laughs> you know, in front of me. And everyone is just locked like the most intense movie you've ever seen in your life. Mm -hmm. All watching the TVs well, over they, the bar. They interrupted the NBA finals for yeah. it. Yeah. So I was in uh, college at the time, Kathy, and I was taking summer school classes up at Bucknell and I'm in the, in the fraternity house and we're in the living room. And my friend Ralph was a huge New York Knicks fan. And so we're watching the Knicks oh. play the Rockets. <laughs> and all of a sudden they cut from the NBA finals to this, which is, and then Steve, like the thing that I had forgotten about until yesterday was that when, when OJ was driving down the four or when, when OJ was in the car in the, you know, on the in the Bronco and Al was driving down the 405 there were people with signs cheering for yes. him yes. people yes. rooting for OJ and and people then uh saw that there was this nationwide live coverage of the of the Bronco quote unquote chase and they 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 went to like overpass so, so they could get on TV so they could hold right. up signs it, all of it was so freaking bizarre it was I can't I read it um and I can't find the informa information now but that chase was one of the most watched uh TV broadcasts Moments. yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's not forget an unsung casualty in this whole thing. David Hasselhoff. Yes. Yeah. was supposed to have his special aired that day. Oh, seriously? Yes. yes. Yep, yep. Wait, what right. was the special? It was a pay-per-view. Yeah, it was like it was like pay-per-view. Uh, uh, Variety. Performance. Yeah. Oh, my God, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. That was a casualty. Uh -huh. uh, but but that also, there were so many things that became part of the, the culture, part of the speaks. Those high, then after that chase, now they had been highlighting chases before that, but after that Bronco pursuit, oh, yeah. it became, in fact, it's lampooned in um, uh, in the second um, uh, Anchorman movie about, I don't care, when he gets the notion, hey, there's an active car pursuit, a police pursuit, we're going to cut to that. And that became part of the, st the standard thing is to break away for a car chase. They yeah. think that that whole chase Increase the sales of Ford Broncos by an additional 7,000 purchases oh that year. Wow. I mean, there's nothing funny about a double murder, but, like, there was comedy that was born out oh. of, you know, like, the, the dancing Edos on Leno and, like, all of that. It just was, it was so captivating for so many people. Uh, there was the, the joke about... Um Oh, man, uh, Denver, uh, quarterback, famous. Oh, John Elway. Yeah, John Elway, the slow white. Slow Bronco. white Bronco. Yeah. 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 It was, it was, well, a joke, it was a big joke that came out of it. Lest that. we forget that yeah. Norm MacDonald at this time during the trial, Norm MacDonald waged a war during Weekend Update on um, on O.J. Simpson. And uh, uh, Don um, Olmeyer yeah. was good friends with O.J. Simpson. He was also running NBC at that time. And that's what got Norm MacDonald fired because he refused to back it, off some of his yeah. best dateline material is based around oj you know he got really into golf and would oh, yeah. golf with a lot of the professionals and they started to pull away he got like um he had to leave one of the golf courses they wouldn't let him back on he had to mm -hmm. join somewhere else because people c just didn't want to associate themselves with him anymore yeah um you know what i found interesting though and it, there wasn't a lot of details in it but that they said he was surrounded by his children and his grandchildren so yes a lot of us think that he did it and he got away with it but like his children were there, still standing by his side. I Listen, I, I watched a uh, I watched a documentary series about a, uh, a a man who was in this family. He was an elder guy, and, and he had been inappropriately touched. He may have been molesting kids within the family for a long time. And even with that horrible thing going on, at the they latter were. part of his life, uh. the family did come around. I don't know why people do that, Kathy, but I guess if family is family at some point, and maybe you, you know... Mm. 
do your family do that? I was thinking the same well, thing. Well, I, I just I, kind I, of I thought, like, well, what, you know, do... What well, maybe was they the story? Believe. Yeah, right. Maybe that's they believe. Why, and they, 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 they it's quite possible. It. And that's you, so what I you, you support your father or whatever the deal is. He had remember he had the story with. It was not like he his life was bereft of um, controversy after. Obviously, yeah. he went to jail yeah. for that that uh, that uh, that uh, issue in in, in Las Vegas here, where they they said he was uh, <laughs> sports guilty. memorabilia. And by the way, the sports memorabilia he was attempting to get, to get back. Was his own sports memorabilia. That's right, yeah. That he was trying to steal back. Yeah. Did you guys get the link sent to you yesterday from the San Francisco Chronicle? Yes. About the, uh, him confessing on his deathbed? No. It was a link to the giant the guy. black guy with yeah. a huge <laughs> of course. wang. I said, I'm not, I texted back, I go, I'm not falling for I this. fell for it. <laughs> By the way, speaking of memorabilia, though, Steve, I, I saw a, uh, uh, a, a feature this morning on the news that his signed memorabilia, OJ, is highly... Traded and and still very valuable. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Very it, it, it's a it's a double punch because you got the uh, you got the uh, just the sports ramifications yeah. of it, and then you have obviously the notorious nature of it. By the way, in a, in a twist of irony, yesterday. Bronco Sport had a massive recall on some of their vehicles. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, they uh, they recalled 22,270 of the compact crossovers, the Bronco Sport, uh, alongside 20,382 uh, escapes for possible cracked fuel injectors. Okay. Oh, um, so, yeah, you can, uh, you can check uh, and see if uh, your car qualifies if it's a 2023 Bronco Sport or 2022 <laughs> Ford uh, Escape. Steve, I want to ask you about your memories of the trial itself because uh, I had I was out of college at that time uh, and I was working at CVS and and one of my coworkers was um, obsessed with it but yeah. her news sources were the Inquirer and <laughs> Weekly World News oh and, they you exploded know, at that the time, time. They yeah, sure did. Yeah. yeah so at that point it w and the trial was ninety five. Um, I remember being a little burnt out on OJ because it, it took over every news cycle and, and you know everything that they did on Leno and whatever else. What, what was your impression of the trial as it was going on? Well, it was it was I'd seen you know there'd been some legendary they had had the the Menendez uh, you know brothers yeah. all so there there had been I don't I think they preceded OJ, um, but the the um, long story short, um, you, you watched all all of it carry out and I was at WDRE in in New York at the time. Uh, and and so I remember watching it and and um, being fascinated by it, and I kept thinking, this seems like, it, this seems like a movie. This seems like you know, this is like I, I couldn't believe all the twists and turns yeah, yeah. from from the uh, Mark Furman to stuff they were digging out about different things. And this is really the first time you heard a Barry Sheck, I think his name yes. was yeah. the DNA expert. It was the first time you heard about heard about. DNA and using DNA and how DNA could be contaminated and all these things and what what were the shoes the uh, the Italian oh, loafers no. Bruno, Bruno Mollies Bruno Mollies yeah. yeah all of those things became part of our common conversation well and, well, and the cop lying too well you know, well 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 Furman th there was things that they found in in Furman's past that they said suggested a potential of racism and so that's what they used oh, wait, against was him. that was Furman the cop Mark Mark Furman oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, okay, it okay. was also in the wake of Rodney King and the LA yeah. riots so yeah. there were like there were right. all these Absolutely. racial right. implications oh, man. that happened a year or, or two years prior so like that was overshadowing there was shattering there was a big racial divide yeah. in in this story and I was I was working at a radio station to, at a time and in the same building we had a sister station that was a mainly black uh, uh, radio uh, staff there, and there was a there was a clear divide about who believed what, and 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 it was it was tense. And when yeah. that uh, jury verdict was announced, we were all in. I was at work, and we were all together watching the TV. And this was uh, this is how antiquated our equipment was. We actually took a microphone <laughs> and put it up to the television, <laughs> and we ran that live on the air. Yeah, right. this is how we did it. So we were all, both staffs were in, in the same room together. And when they announced, then they announced the verdict thing because, Nick, the Rodney King and the riots and all that stuff was still pretty fresh in everyone's mind. Super movie. fresh. We were like, yeah. what is going to happen when this verdict comes down because there was that much of a of a racial divide uh, not with everybody, but there was no, some of it. No. There wasn't as big as, as the Rodney King thing. But we were like, the big question mark was, is there going to be pandemonium if something goes a certain way here? Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously they uh, acquitted him. And um, But I just remember that being as one of the most palpable things at that time. There is footage uh, of uh, the, the verdict is announced live during the Oprah Winfrey show, I believe. Yeah, it had to be the Oprah show. And there was the audience and there was... 
uh, you know, b- b- part of the uh, African American audience, and 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 you could see the response is is very telling at that point, as you said. N- and no, it's not monolithic. Everyone had their own opinion. Sure, but for a large part, a large people in the wake of the uh, the Rodney King thing, everyone was on pins and needles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, there was this celebration in the black community of a rich black guy getting away with murder, and it was it was this weird. I think most black people also acknowledged that in all likelihood he was guilty. And and in subsequent years, they acknowledged that too. But he was a rich black guy who was able to afford the best lawyers and mm. and, and uh, do the things, Steve, that with the, the glove, the tricks, you know, that they were sure. able to pull to get him, you know, to get him off. Get I him think, acquitted. I think, and I, I believe a portion of that, Nick, but I, I believe there was a large a, a portion of um, within the community who, you know, we we know there have been inequities, uh, so that we're seeing they they might have believed the innocence. And whatever you believe, you believe that's right. you know, that's your 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 call. Yep. But I think I think at this point, in lieu of everything that we have seen since then, I think most people. I agree with you, Kathy. Most people believe he did it. I don't think that's even a point right now. There's just been lack of any other evidence. And right. Nothing is ever, no one, after all these years. Nothing has really surfaced. And by the way, no one's ever been. Y- yep. You know, so much of what was put the, the Vincent Bugliosi book um, on it. I think it's called Guilty. Uh, it, it just. Of the time, it's right in the moment. They have all the evidence. That's where you read about the the arthritis medication. That's where you read about um, all of these other things about, it, it, you know, for example, part of the the case that was made, and I don't want to break this down and drill down too deep, but if you add someone else's blood to other blood, it doesn't overpa- other, it doesn't overpower. You have two samples of blood that are readable with the DNA, but because they were they were um, they were introducing this evidence at the beginning of the use of this, the jury's like confused and they were trying to explain it and listen that was the team you wanted that was i mean that you say what you will about johnny cochran but holy hell Uh, yeah they'll uh they'll get you you know help you get away with murder um do you guys remember uh they kept referring to ron goldman as nicole brown simpson's friend and and clearly they yeah. were like it's still, dating. They still do. Yeah. It, well, I mean, you know, that was that was her boyfriend at the time. But I believe she was still married to OJ, even though they were separated. They still. By the way, um, uh, Simpson. Uh, they. they now here, I, I got a, a timeline here. Nineteen ninety-two. Okay. Nicole Brown Simpson files for divorce after seven years of marriage. It becomes final October fifteenth. Gotcha. Okay. So they must have been legally divorced. They got were. It. They were. Yeah. And and uh, and uh, they, and they had gone like back and forth a little bit. And they and yeah. they said every time they would get back together, like this domestic, they, you know, the cops would get domestic violence calls and all that. Like it would just and people, you know, who surrounded them said the same thing. Like their their relationship was just so volatile and violent. Right. He was he was an abusive husband. He was a brutalizer. And he he there's and there's loads of proof that was suppressed. And he enjoyed an incredibly uh, privileged response when they showed up and it was OJ. They had a number of instances. She said where, she was never helped. Right, never helped. Uh, and, and that's why she she took to taking her own pictures after these attacks. But he was you can't that's that's part of his history as well. He was a he was a brutal wife beater. That's what he did. And afterwards, you know, after all of this in his later years, I mean, he just there was always something surrounding him criminal you know there were cops yeah. involved like there was just remember the there was uh, always something do you yeah. remember the thing that they got into some issue with i think it was a um a dish or a, a satellite dish yeah, yeah. A, and cable he, or something he, it was he owed like no. 25 million dollars because <laughs> and all he was not I, all he was doing but i he was basically getting free cable like he, he was, who hasn't done I that mean, before <laughs> but that goes to inherently what's you know what his issue was again he was he beat double murder <laughs> and he gets a, he gets jail time he does he think what did he do 7 8 years he did a little while I mean, he's looking at 33 i think he only did 8 uh, 8 or so they let him out but i mean he did the jail time for kidnapping in a las vegas hotel room and he basically held guys at gunpoint until he got his memorabilia back he was sentenced to 33 <clears throat> years uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, nine to thirty-three years. Right, right. And sent to Lovelock Correctional Center. Uh, so he served the nine, and then he, he got he out served on less. Than yeah, that. a little bit less. Yeah, yeah. he was. Uh, that was in two thousand eight, uh, and then he was granted parole in two thousand seventeen. Do you remember? Wow. Yeah, nine years. Not soon after, wow. he started uh, hopping up on uh, social media, and I think he wanted to see if he could revive. He, in his mind, because he'd, he'd released that book, If I Did It. Do you remember that uh, book? Like, yeah. I mean, 
Why? I, 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 I kind of would like to have read that and seen what he was trying to pull I off. watched this special that was associated with it. Mm-hmm. And what it really appeared to everyone is, listen, I'm going to admit that I did it, but I want you to understand where I was mentally when I did it. Really? So, yes. Okay. Yes, of course. So that's where that that was the the presentation of the book. Check it out. Yeah, check out the reviews. That's no, con- I will. But but I'm surprised that 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 you say that he kind of admits that he did it. Well, what is the whole purpose of the book? If uh, I did it, I would have done it this way. If right. it, this might have been a reason I did it. Okay. That's sort of a faux admission of guilt. Huh. Right. So I mean. Otherwise, why do you write that book? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. There was also something surrounding the the memorabilia and all of that. He tried to create a business of some sort and and was stopped. Like somebody sued him saying it was... Uh, I, I I don't know, it, but it was it was surrounding all of that and him creating a business, and it's just, just like I said before, there was just always something that the, came along with his name. It was a morass of controversy that surrounded him, and again, you you be double murder. You you just lay low. Just shush. But I, I think in in, in in Shakespearean, classic Shakespearean style, he really craved the adulation yeah, he the got. Love. He was beloved, yeah. and he couldn't understand yeah. why that wasn't coming back to him. So in a way, not that he should have obviously been put away for, for double murder, but in a way, he was held prisoner by his own hubris. Hey, is Al Cowling still alive? Yes. Did he ever say anything about this? Loyal to OJ. I, I don't remember anything afterwards. L- completely loyal to OJ. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if he's uh, said anything as of late. Uh about any of that. By the way, the um, the Bronco, uh, it is, uh, I have information on that, the actual vehicle. Uh, it was driven by Al Cowlings. It was his Bronco. Um, and apparently, it is now at a museum. It is at the, hang on a second here. He sold the Bronco, which is now part of the Tennessee Museum. It's a, uh, it's a crime museum. Uh, and it's next to other infamous vehicles associated with some of America's most famous criminals. The name of the museum, it's in P- Pigeon Ford, oh, Tennessee. That's where Dollywood is. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's it's over there, and I have the name of it somewhere here, but... I wonder if that's the place... Is that where they house the, uh, the, the, the Tupac death car? There the- is uh, John Dillinger's uh, oh. car, and uh, they have the, the 1993 SX uh, Terraplane used by... It says 1993 John Dillinger? No, I don't no. think so. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he had a time machine. Uh, Ted Bundy's Volkswagen Beetle is Yes, there. classic. And the car that was used for uh, Bonnie and Clyde in the movie uh, with Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway. Um, they shared, uh, the museum recently shared a photo of the vehicles on social media. Uh, an upcoming exhibit uh, slated to open this summer will focus on the 30th anniversary of the murders. Uh, the museum did previously uh, honor Nicole Brown Simpson with an exhibit showing her life. By the way, O.J. at the time of death owed the Simpson family, I mean, it was what the, the, the penalty was for the civil case, over $100 million. Jesus. Wow. How much did he ever pay of it? He paid 30, me- So what he did is he turned over money from autograph signing, which I think uh. at the end totaled something like $30 million. And when his house was foreclosed on, the yeah. the money went to them. Gotcha. It's the Alcatraz East Crime Museum in Pigeon Ford, Tennessee. Okay. And it's been on display since 2016. Where else would you put the Alcatraz Museum? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> Tennessee. Do you guys remember the rumor that started circulating a few years ago that uh, Khloe Kardashian's dad was O.J. Simpson? Well, you know, she got bombarded yesterday by Did condolences. Right. Yeah. yeah. That was that was years ago, though. That, that That's what I said. Out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Uh <laughs> She doesn't look a lot like her sister. So. No, she does not. <laughs> no, and, and but I'll tell you what, Chris Jenner. I think she released a statement, and Nick Muir, you can uh, follow up on this. But I, I think I think it was basically good riddance. Oh, really? Yeah. Chris Jenner had the rumor was had had an affair with um, with OJ OJ while married to uh, Robert Shapiro. Okay, and uh, so that was that, the deal. And that's where the Chloe rumor comes. That's from. That's where the Chloe rumor comes. You from. You guys remember OJ was with uh, when he was uh, on and off again with Nicole Brown. He was also with uh, Tony Katane for a stretch. Yes, he was. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I, I got a little obsessed for it with, with with all of it for a year or so, and then I got tired of it, uh, and then and then. I, to me, it's one of those just fascinating moments in U.S. history. Do you know what it did in, in a way, too? It, it, it was the first indicator of how, at least to me, as I was kind of running a diagnostic on myself saying, wow, I'm susceptible to this sort of, 
Oh, this. Oh, that. Oh, this. I don't yes. know what you mean. The gossip part of it. The and- gossip part oh, of it, okay. Preston. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. The, the, the information coming in and, um, you know, we, it's coming at you fast and furiously. And you're like, oh, I believe that. Or I believe this. It's like, mm, take a breath. Right. Relax. Yeah. You know, you're getting all this stuff thrown at you. Like you were talking about the Inquirer and the Star, I think it was at the time. And they were actually getting breaking news. they were news. getting breaking news. Yeah. Same m- magazines that uh, uh, two weeks earlier it had Bat Boy in a cave. That's right. right. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we're suddenly breaking, you know, it was crazy. Yeah. Cato Kalen have anything to say today? That's a good question, too. I mean, He like- was on the, some of the news shows last night. Okay. Yeah. I, I, there's a guy who women dug him. He yeah. uh, he was kind of a uh, a good looking dude. Yeah, he lived. He was the one. You remember? You remember the part of that? His part. He was. He'd gone out to. Um, OJ asked if he wanted to go out for some fast food. They went and got some burgers, and it was um, the guest room, Cato's guest room, yeah. where whoever somebody ran by and slammed the air conditioner outside his room, and that figured prominently into the case, but. All this stuff is now just nothing in the wind. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, wow. But it's a it's a chunk of history, uh, without question. That whole yep. thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, I wonder if they will, in hindsight, eventually find some evidence or go back and rehash, uh, you know, some of the DNA or anything like that, and prove conclusively know. what happened. Yeah, right? so, do they or are they are they just? I, don't know. I think just the main the main thing is that your the, the the Goldman family, as as uh, the, his dad said yesterday, is that it reminds me of the death of my son, the uh, murder of my son. Yeah, I just yeah. pulled up that statement, and uh, I mean, he can't believe that it was thirty years ago. Wow. All right. Well, listen, we got to take a break. We got to stay on time. We have money for you to win. Good money. It is coming along right at eight o'clock. So that's just a few minutes away. We'll take a break. Come back in a second. We got some B file stories. We got guests. We got. Stuff to give away. We'll do it all. Stay with us. It's time for a good money it keyword. The keyword for this hour is payout. P A Y O U T. All right, you'll have until 15 minutes after the hour to enter it. There are three ways that you can do it uh, through WMMR.com. You can do it through your MMR app, or you can text it to the special contest short code number, which is 45911. A random entry will win $1,000 in our company-wide contest, and each winner gets a call from Beasley. Make sure you answer your phone. Contest rules available at WMMR.com and is sponsored by McLaughlin Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. So the word again for you to enter is payout, P-A-Y. O-U-T, O-U-T, enter that now for your chance to win $1,000. Let's take a look at traffic, see what's happening. Kathy, what you got so far? Flooding at the Brooklawn Circle, so Route 130 closed. Also, Delcy Drive closed uh, at Route 130. Admiral Wilson Boulevard, westbound closed between, between Baird Boulevard and Federal Street because of flooding. 295 northbound, backing up 551 to the 42 freeway. 42 north is heavy, the Black Horse Pike to 295. 55 northbound, Jam Stepford to 42. Uh, the flooding on the Colum- on Columbus Boulevard is cleared, so reopened both directions between Dock Street and Callow Hill. Uh, on 95 South, bound your jam from Cotman to the Betsy Ross Bridge. Once you get to the Vine, westbound, you're slowing 8th to Broad, the Ben Franklin Parkway to the Schuylkill eastbound, the Schuylkill to Broad, Schuylkill westbound. Uh, slowing from University to South Street City to Belmont, eastbound direction from Montgomery into University. Uh, Blue Route northbound, backing up Baltimore Pike to the Media Bypass, and then on 422 eastbound at Stowe, we still have that disabled vehicle blocking the right lane. This traffic report brought to you by Allstate. Some people just know there's a better way to do things like bundling your home and auto insurance with Allstate. Visit Allstate.com or call for a quote today. And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. From the band Froggy. Now, Bizarre. WMMR presents Bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre, Bizarre. Bizarre Final. 
Brought to you by Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds since 1987. My daughters. <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking like this. Get free seeding every year. Call 800 free seed now. My daughters. All right, the this is a wild story out of Idaho. An 85 year old woman who shot and killed a man after he broke into her home in the middle of the night was threatened, hit, handcuffed to a chair, and shot multiple times. She shot and killed him, an 85-year-old woman. That's pretty badass. Yeah, deputies responded just after noon, but the home invasion began at about 2 a.m. They identified the 85-year-old woman as Christine uh, Janaya. Janayan. Where are y'all going right? Uh, the suspect was identified as Derek Ephraim Condon. Uh, the <laughs> two were known to each other. It's not believed that it was a random incident. Uh, Condon's death had been ruled a justifiable ho homicide. Early that morning, uh, Janayan was sleeping in her home. Uh, the only other person in her home was her adult disabled son, David Janayan, who was in his room downstairs. Uh, the home is out of the way from neighbors. It's way away. Uh, uh, Christine told investigators that she was woken up by an unknown man. He was later identified as Condon. Condon was dressed in a military jacket and black ski mask. He was pointing a gun and flashlight at her. Wow. Condon placed her in handcuffs and took her into the living room. Uh, it was a strong likelihood that he struck her on the head as she lay in her bed because there was blood on the pillow where she had been sleeping. She had said that he had hit her in the head at some point during the incident, but she was unsure exactly when. Oh, now you went too far. After taking her at gunpoint into the living room, Condon handcuffed her to a wooden chair. He asked her where the valuables were kept and put his pistol against her head after she told him she didn't have much. Uh, she told him that there were two safes downstairs in the home. He left her alone, handcuffed in the living room. He went downstairs multiple times, rummaging through several rooms. Eventually, he discovered that her son was in the home and got angry at her for not telling him. He made multiple threats and told her that he would kill her. When he went downstairs again at some point, and I don't know if she really had a safe or she was lying or whatever, Jeez. but she he goes downstairs. She dragged the chair that she was handcuffed to into her bedroom. 85. Got her 357 Magnum revolver, which she was under her pillow, by the way. And then she went back into the living room and then she hid the revolver between the armrest and the cushion of a couch next to where she was sitting while she waited to see what he did next. Her memory of exactly what happened next remains somewhat unclear, according to a review. She told investigators that at some point, Condon came back into the living room and threatened to kill her as he continued to burglarize her home. And she ultimately made the decision that it was now or never and she pulled out the gun and engaged him, striking him with both of her shots. She shot him in the chest. Uh, the, an 85-year-old yeah. man, a woman shooting a 357 Magnum. Yep, and he fired at her after, after he gets shot. He returns fired. He had a 9mm. He hit her multiple times in the abdomen, leg, arm, and chest. He went into the kitchen, and then he died right there. She fell to the floor, still handcuffed in the living room. She stayed there, shot multiple times for 10 hours. Jeez. Oh. She was ultimately able to call 911 after her son came upstairs later in the morning and gave her a phone. Now, he's disabled. I don't know if he's oh, mentally okay. disabled. All I don't right. know what. Yeah, because you would think he would respond to all yeah. that ruckus. So, so he's an adult, disabled okay. uh, her son. Uh, she was transported to a medical center in Idaho Falls. Uh, investigators revealed that there was a broken window in the back of her home and a screwdriver was found next to the door where he came inside. Investigators searched uh, his body. They found that he had a lock pick set, his car keys, a uh, handcuff uh, key, and a bag that had items that he had stolen. Uh, the sheriff's office said that uh, its staff feels fortunate to know that... Uh, uh, the, the, uh, to know her, and they look forward to finding a way to honor her at a later date. So I didn't, in this report, I didn't get an update on her condition, but she was shot like four times, man, and stayed there <laughs> for 10 hours. I got to believe she's not doing that great. She's 85, 85 years old. But she, it turns out she's a superhero. Unbelievable. Mm. Wow. Okay. Uh, here's another unbelievable story. U.S. Navy and Coast Guard operation uh, on Tuesday rescued three mariners stranded on a tiny Pacific Ocean islet for more than a week after the trio spelled out the word help using palm fronds laid on a white sand beach. Uh, the mission also unexpectedly turned into a family reunion. It says kelp. So the three men had been planning to fish the waters around uh, the uh, Picolot Atoll, part of Micronesia, uh, when their 20-foot open skiff was caught by swells, its outboard motor was damaged. They scrambled ashore on this uninhabited uh, island. 
but their radio ran out of battery power before they could call for help. So they gathered the palm fronds, they arranged the word help, and then they just sat back and waited. For a week, they lived off of coconut meat. Yeah. Uh, this is like right out of... Uh, Gilligan's Island. Or, or I was going to say <laughs> Castaway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they did have fresh water from a small well on the island. Somehow or another, there was a well there. This I is guess. unbelievable. Which is sometimes visited by fishers in the region. Uh, have they built a car out of coconuts? They said it's difficult to overstate just how remote this island is. It's part of the Federated States of Micronesia, a Pacific nation between the Philippines and Hawaii. It's made up of more than 600 islands scattered across about 2.5 million square kilometers of ocean. Uh, a U.S. Navy P-8A reconnaissance jet was dispatched. They spotted the Palm Frond help sign on April 7th. They, a jet dropped survival packs to the men and relayed their location to a rescue center. Uh, a day later, a uh, Coast Guard HC-130 uh, dropped the radio to the men who were able to tell the crew that they were in good shape and eager for uh, help to get back to uh, Pulawat, which is where, uh, I guess, a base is. So... Can you send a woman? When the uh, when the Coast Guard cutter Oliver Henry reached them, uh, the story took another twist. One of the first rescuers on the beach was Petty Officer Second Class Eugene Halishlus, and the stranded men were surprised to see that he was Micronesian and spoke the local language. When they gave his name uh, to the first of the stranded men, uh, the reach of the rescue, rescue bit, the, the castaway was stunned because they were related. Apparently, what? They, the man was a third cousin wow. and the others were fourth cousins Cause? as well. Isn't that insane? Yeah. I mean, this is, again, it just, this is why you can't believe Gilligan's Island. Yeah. <laughs> Look at how quickly these guys were able to affect a, a rescue. Week. Yeah. All right. And there you go. That's, uh, we only had time for two stories, two big good wow. ones. Oh, yeah. awesome stories in the B file. That is it. All right. So you've got five minutes left to enter the word payout for good money, it, good money to see you uh, through WMMR.com, the MMR app, or you can text it to 45911. So again, the word is payout, P A Y O U T. Make sure you do that now. We're going to break. We're going to come back in a moment. And then I think we're going to have a seat at the restaurant and dine a bit. Yes. On a lot of free concert tickets, Connoisseur and more on the way. Stay with us. And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. All right, in a little while, our buddy Tom Papa is checking in. We're also going to have uh, Martin Coe from uh, Cobra Kai and Karate Kid and all that stuff. And his son Jesse on in the program. But right now, order up. Hey. It is time for the Connoisseur. It's time for the Connoisseur. We both have. Yes, we do. And uh, we are going to be giving away a bunch of things. Just cornucopia. For yeah. prizes. We have uh, all kinds of concert tickets to Struts and Aerosmith and Deep Purple and Yes and a few other things in there as well. Yeah. Um, you're going to be able to perhaps join Nick this Sunday for the Pearl Jam listening party. Ooh. Ooh. All right, let's do a, let's start with a story and then we'll play a clip here in a moment. Uh, I found this very interesting in the world of the connoisseur. Uh, Uber Eats, uh, the food delivery platform, is launching a new feature that will allow app users to scroll through a feed of food videos from their nearby restaurants. <laughs> That's funny. What? No, it's just like evolving. So, like you know, yeah. <laughs> Uber Eats was something that was like, wow, we can get food delivered. Now you can see a video of the food you're ordering. Well, before you order it. So <laughs> yeah. sometimes people like a visual uh, peek at what they're totally. going to be getting if it doesn't how describe soon, well. How soon before another service steps in that drives over samples? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> uh, the video snippets, which merchants will have the option to provide to Uber Eats, will appear in a feed on the app's home screen as well as in carousels throughout the app, uh, Uber Eats had said. A uh, spokesperson said this is this new short-form video feed designed to help showcase dishes from top merchants allows top merchants to attract new customers and tell a visual story of their meals, which currently isn't available on other delivery platforms. Just make your visual story what you're actually delivering. Yeah. 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 Keep yeah. it real. You know? <laughs> Keep it real. <laughs> so do you, do you use any with any frequency, Kathy? Not not with frequency. I've, I've used them before, but not with any frequency. Um, I did see some pictures, though, of uh, a deli that I wanted to order something from, and their pictures were true to life. Like, oh, really? overcooked eggs <laughs> and wow. on a bake. Like, have you yeah, tried our like, overcooked uh, eggs? But, we even have runny eggs. But listen, it. I mean, it It was what we got. Like, I was there like, well, go. the pictures showed it. Uh -huh. I use uh, I use uh, Tri Caviar, which is basically as uh, DoorDash. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and I use that pretty often. Like, uh, 
At least once a week, maybe two times a week. Oh, wow. Well. Like on TikTok, a hungry user will be able to swipe through a series of vertical clips showing a variety of dishes being prepared at restaurants handpicked by the Uber Eats team. Uh, if the user likes what they see, they can order that dish or similar dishes directly from the video screen, right? Yeah, there. yeah. So uh, because the videos aren't advertisements, mm -hmm. Uber Eats won't charge restaurants to display them in the app. And uh, the new feature is currently only being tested in New York, San Francisco, and Toronto, but the company plans to eventually roll it out to more cities. So on the cool. Tri Caviar, and I think it's, so they're both one now, because they say, they call them dashers when they deliver the food, but uh, when you order through Tri Caviar, you're basically seeing uh, the full uh, a menu with pictures of all the food. So you're already seeing right. it on, on that app. So this is in addition to uh, Uber Eats. Yeah, and it'll actually be video. Oh, uh, video, yeah. Yeah, these are videos that are going to roll, so it's them preparing the food and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. All right, uh, we're going to play a clip, see if you know what this is from. It has to do with food or drink. Here we go. You don't look very well, Annie. I feel fine. Are you sure? If it wasn't that gray kind of lamb or you ate a lot of that weird chicken. Was it that? No. <laughs> Um, I feel fine. All right, 215-263-WMMR. Uh, <laughs> Let's see if you know what it's from. Order up. All right, so speaking of gray chicken, let's talk about ground beef. Uh, if, what if you grab some ground beef from the fridge or freezer and it's gray? Mm, throw it out. Okay. Immediately. The, the answer is it might not be bad. Throw it uh, out anyway. Oh, might? Who wants to play with it might not be? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's pretty easy to figure it out. You just essentially have to smell it. Uh, freshly cut meat is a purplish or burgundy color, but that changes quickly. Oxygen reacts with the myoglobin, which is a protein found in muscles, causing the meat to darken. This is according to Brittany Towers, the food scientist behind the Black Food Scientist. Uh, after about 15 minutes of exposure to the air, the meat turns a bright red color that we're familiar with seeing in the butcher case. And about uh, after about five days in the fridge, the outside will turn gray. Um, but what about raw ground beef that's red on the outside and brownish in the center? So myoglobin has three color states, purple, red, and gray-brown. Um, they touch on how the gray-brown state can occur after prolonged storage, but... That color shift can also be caused when the meat is exposed to small amounts of oxygen, like the environment in the center of your package of ground beef, or, which I see this a lot, when you get pre-made burger patties and they're stacked on top of each yes, other. Yes, yes. If you pull that up, you'll notice that it's kind of grayed in that area it's from right. touching the other yes. meat. Ah. It's fine. There's it's nothing, okay? There's nothing wrong so with that. So if it's on the inside, it's okay? Is that what I'm hearing? The out, actually, if it's outside, it's not? Here's the deal. To figure out if it's safe... Uh, it says use all of your senses as well as your common sense. As long as ground beef isn't slimy or doesn't smell bad, the color does not matter. Okay, so immediately. Outside, I, okay. Inside, no way. You say mm -hmm. use all your senses, right? My my sense of sight. I see gray meat. It's uh -huh. going to look slimy. It's going to smell bad. It's going to be like I... I that wouldn't be able to use it. anything else because okay. I'd be like, nope. You I panic. Smell it. Smell, yeah. it, it smells bad, right? I, it smells bad. So, it so smells my, bad, my, doesn't it? It does, right? <laughs> my, my inclination is having had food poisoning twice. Yeah. I'm like, forget it. Forget it. Mm. Uh, to keep ground beef at its freshest, use it within a day or two of buying it, or you can stash it in a Ziploc freezer bag, mark the outside of the bag with a date, uh, and freeze the meat for up to four months. Uh, you want to thaw ground beef in the fridge before cooking it. Do you know is, that, uh, sorry, is hunger a sense? Like... Um, yeah, uh, or is it a? Yeah, it's a good your question. Sense. That's, That's that your would, sense. Yeah, I think I'm, it's, I'm, it's a sensation, right? I was he's just, like, I'm hungry. I'll eat it. Yeah, that, I, I would do the, the eye test, and obviously, if it smells bad, give it to Nick. It. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I just don't know if hunger is actually a sense or not. Uh, um, yeah, that is a good question. I, uh, perhaps a sensation is more correct. If yeah. it's if it's a if it's a sense of pain or discomfort, then that would be a, a sort of sense of touch, right? Hunger pang. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Uh, the By whole, the way, why isn't there a Chinese restaurant named Hunger Pang? Hunger Pang. <laughs> oh, yeah, there <laughs> should like be. Uh, the whole myoglobin conversation is also a good reminder that the safest way to know when meat is cooked to temperature is to use an instant read thermometer. Because here's the deal. If your ground beef is gray before cooking, visuals alone won't tell you when it's cooked properly. Uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture recommends cooking ground beef to about... 160 degrees Fahrenheit. What I will do is I will use it because it is a, um, I won't eat it, but it is a great substitute for Play-Doh. 
Oh, wow. you know what? It is yeah, malleable yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Sure. That is one I have a really, ground beef, a really hard time uh, preparing and then eating afterwards. You don't like ch touching it? You don't like that, stroking it, massaging it? That and chicken. Chicken. Ch chicken is the worst. Uh, ground beef is comes in second. Like, like if I have to handle it raw yeah. and like remembering the raw state and not... Like with my chicken, if I, if I do ever cook chicken, which I don't that often. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? It, it's like- In your mind, you're remembering it, what it's like in its raw state, and that and makes it hard oh, for you gross, to eat it. Interesting. Yeah. Just don't ever cook. Mm, chicken. Don't ever cook, Kathy. Kristen, Just, that yeah. is a great- Isn't that a great idea? I, great idea. Yeah. <laughs> Smart. All right, Smart. let's see if you know what movie this is from. You don't look very well, Annie. I feel fine. Are you sure? It wasn't that- gray kind of lamb or you ate a lot of that weird chicken was it that no um i feel fine <laughs> you can hear the gurgling it's so good. <laughs> uh hi lauren good morning good morning all right lauren what movie is it from that is from bridesmaid yes, yes. 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 absolutely correct Ooh. and we got a great prize for you, Lauren. Lauren, you won right. a pair of tickets as MMR rocks Aerosmith. Whoa. Peace out. The farewell tour with Man. special guests, the Black Crows. That's going to be on Monday, September 23rd at Wells Fargo Center. Tickets are on sale today. Yes. Wait. Hang on a second. No. <laughs> All right. So hang on. It says tickets Today's go on Friday. sale 414. Uh, Friday 414. That's Friday, not. Friday 414. Yeah. That's, 414 that's, is not a Friday. That is not. That's, no. that's lunacy. Yeah, that is lunacy. Probably they today. almost it's, always go on sale on Friday. Yeah, so Friday at today. 10 a.m. via Ticketmaster. And just right. go to WMMR.com yeah. for another chance to win tickets. Yeah. All right. Press, hang on, Lauren. Did you watch the, <clears throat> excuse me, did you watch the movie Bridesmaids? I did. You did. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, you Because I didn't watch it for the longest I know. time. Oh, yeah. It's great. Yeah. I, I loved it. Yeah. And that scene's so good. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's wonderful. Yeah. It's so it's, 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 Melissa McCarthy <laughs> yeah. jumping onto the sink. <laughs> there's actually, there's a clip we could use for the connoisseur that comes at the end during the credits. Yeah. Is they're talking about a sandwich? Yes. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, yeah. We'll use that down the road. All right, here's the next clip. Let's see if you know what movie this is from. When a guy picks a chick over his buddy, something got to be wrong. You said... Come on, guys. Let's go for a slice of pizza. Yeah. All right. 215-263-WMMR. <laughs> Next story. Del Monte has introduced the precious Honey Glow Pineapple. Okay. It is a smaller pineapple that weighs about 1.5 to 2 pounds, and it is designed to serve one person and to reduce food waste. So you get a little personal pineapple. So I love this. Uh, I... Love pineapple. Mm -hmm. I was introduced to pineapple in the most cruel way possible. What? A canned pineapple, uh, oh. uh, which is not... When you have fresh pineapple, yeah, yeah, yeah. when yes. you have that... It's way better. It's yeah. way better. Agreed. I remember the can, though. The It came yeah. in and oh, it, yeah. it would come... The with, rings. Yeah, with the, the rings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how it has to be in nature. Uh, so, inspired by the small... Uh, Fule, Fule, which are pineapples of Thailand. Uh, this new offering aims to suit customer uh, prefer preferences for size, sweetness, and sustainability. Would you like a Fule? Uh, grown yeah. on specialty farms in Costa Rica, the precious Honey Glow apple, uh, I'm sorry, pineapple, is has a distinctively sweeter taste and golden hue. Can't yeah, believe you can get sweeter than a regular pineapple. Yeah, let's bring me a Fule. Uh, which is achieved by allowing the fruit to mature and ripen naturally on the plant for additional days. What is the sweetest um, of the fruits, by your reckoning? I, I think it's pineapple. Pineapple, yeah. pineapple yeah. or grapes. Yeah. yeah, those are the two. What about mango? That's pretty. Mango. Yeah, mango's pretty sweet. Likes me a mango too. Not as sweet as pineapple, though. I agree. Pineapple's, pineapple's very sweet. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Del Monte's new mini pineapples uh, is meant to address the rising trend of single-person households in the U.S. and offer sustainable solutions for food spoilage. Uh, and I've been to Hawaii a few times, and it's probably psychosomatic. No, it's not. But they not. taste better there. <laughs> well, listen, you have they fried, taste better there. You have fried chicken in the South? It's going to taste better. Agreed. Uh, um, uh, I will tell you this, and this is a weird anomaly because I've often mentioned, you know, they, they, they now are able to serve watermelon or, you know, sell it at uh, the supermarket throughout the year. And so what happened was is, um, you know, I, I always said in the winter, though, it's still not quite right. Uh, I bought a uh, sliced watermelon from Acme, 
It was the best watermelon I ever had. That's it's good. Kind of still off season, is it not? Uh, yeah. I mean, well, technically around here it is. But yeah. I mean, you it's, get, start, it's coming into season. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, my fiance is allergic to pineapple, and I feel so bad for her. She can't oh. have it, and, and it, like it, she breaks out in hives, and um, it just it sucks because she can't enjoy it, and I love it so damn much. Yeah, I can't really have. I can't have no too kidding. much of it. Yeah. Oh, that's Mm-mm. a shame. Okay. It starts to bother me. I could have like if I had a piece, I'm not gonna. What like, if you filled it with vodka? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, there is. Wait, there is a there is a pineapple dolly at Redstone. Does it become too acidic for you after a while? Um, your stomach, or you know, so I would describe it almost as like a um, not an allergy, but uh, it's like a sensitivity. I start to not really feel good. Okay. By the way, it's supposed to sweeten your. Uh, uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Yes. Your, 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 man, your manly your man juice. Your manly juice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And next time you get a pineapple at the grocery store, make sure it's upside down in your car. That's, That's right. right. Yeah, you have to swinger. Do that. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see if you know what movie this clip is from. Picks that chick over his buddy. Something got to be wrong. You said, Come on, guys. Let's go for a slice of pizza. Yeah. All right. We're going to go to Joe, see if we know the, he knows the answer. Hi, Joe. Hey, I bet it's Grease. Yes! Yay! Yay! Well done, sir. Wow. Grease is correct. And Casey, what do we have for him? All right, Joe, you have our last pair of tickets. as MMR Rocks Aerosmith, the Peace Out mm. Farewell Tour with special guest, the Black Crows. That's on Monday, September 23rd at the Wells Fargo Center. Tickets are on sale today at 10 a.m. via Ticketmaster. Just go to WMMR.com for another chance to win tickets. All right, let's queue up another clip, I and you. we will play this one. Let's see if you know what movie this food clip is. We're playing that one? Uh, I'm just going in order of your your page. Over oh, there. I didn't see that. All right, uh, let's see if you know what clip this is from. Here we go. Koufax is a good egg. He was nice to that kid, but he fights like a girl. <laughs> you like that? I'm right here, miss. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> what are you, drunk, Mr. Hurley? Well, I, I had a few Chardonnays. What of it? All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. 215 263 WMMR. Let's get to the next one. Uh, Nissen Foods has crafted a culinary fusion that marries the beloved bagel culture with the convenience of instant ramen. Available exclusively at Walmart, this innovative creation promises to redefine the breakfast experience for noodle enthusiasts everywhere. Okay. The everything bagel with cream cheese flavor. I like that. I I love an everything bagel. It encapsulates the essence of the classic bagel by infusing cup noodles, signature noodles, with a medley of sesame seeds, poppy seeds, garlic, dried onion, and caraway seeds, all enveloped in a decadent cream cheese sauce. You know, I was surprised to find out that how how many calories in ramen? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is there a lot? It's more than I thought. Unlike traditional cup noodles, this (laughs) variation boasts a rich, saucy texture that mimics the indulgence of a freshly toasted bagel. I love ramen. Don't like the cup noodles, though. Okay. You know, I don't like the freeze-dried uh, vegetables that they put in there. You know, there's, ah. a, there's a new ramen place up on City Line. Is there? Yep. Yeah, it's right next to the uh, uh, the same lot that has the Starbucks in it. What's the brand, uh, Casey, that you get? The ones that come in the, the uh, cellophane package that's a cube? Yeah, do that. But uh, my kids, uh, they love the spicy bowls now. Okay. Um, so we, we get those a lot. But they're more expensive. I mean, you can get, like, the, all those bricks of... Yeah. Ramen for like two cents. But, uh, you know, these ones, they cost a whole like $1.59 a, a cup. Uh, the cup uh, noodles. Made of money. Yeah. The cup noodles, everything bagel, cream cheese is a suggested price of $1.18. Uh, alongside this launch, uh, cup noodles breakfast will also make its return to shells for a limited time. Uh, providing even more variety for breakfast aficionados seeking a quick and satisfying meal option. Yeah, man. Ramen noodles, the little packages at, at like a buck or less. Yeah. You still, you just can't beat that. Mm-mm. If you're if you're trying to save money, and great. You can add just a little bit of you know fresh vegetables or whatever to that yeah. if you want to make it more nutritious. But that is, you can't beat that. Yeah, and and I uh, I just have vivid memories of sitting in Barry and Brian's uh, <laughs> uh, kitchen, and I had never had it before. I mean, I thought it was cuisine. I had no idea that it <laughs> yeah. was seventeen cents a brick at that time. But uh, and we were cooking it over the stove. Like, who cooks ramen on a stove these days? It's all. My, did you guys Michael, do that or my? I, I, I still yeah. do. Yeah. I still do the stove. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it doesn't Dude. take long to boil water. I told you guys about the time I, I was cooking it in college in a hot pot, not a hot plate, but a hot pot, and I accidentally stepped into it because it was on the floor what? and it burned me so bad oh the cap God. i was wearing socks and <gasps> so it just continued to burn oh uh-huh yeah it was a, a college staple for us as well casey it just occurred to me that you could try that uh hot dog trick uh with a yeti with ramen 
You You're right. Head, you know? Yeah. Well, true. I mean, I'm not going to eat need... ramen on the beach, but... Yeah, but I mean, like, uh, maybe camping, camping or whatever. Yeah. Well, Jinx. Okay. Wasn't there a Beach Boys song called Ramen on the Beach? I, 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 I don't know. All we, right. Let's see if somebody knows what clip. <laughs> ramen on the beach. Eating ramen on the beach. <laughs> Let's see if you know what movie this is from. Kofax is a good egg. He was nice to that kid, but he fights like a girl. You like that? I'm right here, miss. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> what are you, drunk, Mr. Hurley? Well, I, I had a few Chardonnays. What of it? <laughs> Chardonnays. <laughs> uh, we will go to Emily and see if she knows the movie. Hi, Emily. Good morning. Hi, good morning. You guys rock. Thank you, Emily. All right, what movie is that from? Mr. Deeds. <gasps> no. Oh, shoot. Incorrect. Oh. Sorry, Ems. All right, we'll go next to Julie. See if she knows. Hi, Julie. Good morning. Hi, good morning. All right, Julie, name that movie. Big Daddy. That's it. Yes. Yes. Right. Big Daddy. She was close before, but yep. what will we give Julie? You got a pair of tickets. It's MMR Rocks the Struts. Pretty vicious tour. That's oh. going to be on Friday, August 2nd at the Fillmore, Philadelphia. Tickets go on sale today, 412 at uh, 10 a.m. via Ticketmaster. <laughs> go to WMMR.com for the pre-sale password and for another chance to win. All right, Julie, hang on the line. We'll get your information. Let's play another clip and see if you know what a food clip this movie this. What food clip? Hang on. Uh, yeah, what I, movie I, I, this food clip is from? I got you, bro. All right, hit it. Uh, where, what the hell did I do with it? We there it is. Person. What movie is this food clip from? <laughs> there we go. I've been doing so well the past couple times. It's the glasses. There we go. What about <laughs> yeah. Katrina DeVort? You could totally go out with Katrina DeVort. I don't like Katrina. She, she smells like soup. I mean, have you ever smelled her? And her whole house smells like soup. All right. <laughs> That's good. 215 263 WMMR. Next order. Uh, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg had a Grammy-nominated hit with their song Gin and Juice back in 1994. So 30 years later, they've decided to cash in on the song's title with a new gin-based gin and juice premium can cocktail. Uh, the new beverages are available in four flavors, citrus, melon, passion fruit, and apricot. Uh, Snoop has, of course, had his hand in multiple businesses. And back in 2018, he released a cookbook that was titled From Crook to Cook, uh, and he'd recently collaborated with Master P on Broadus Foods, uh, the company that specializes in breakfast products. Uh, the gin and juice cocktails represent the first time that he has stepped into the beverage arena, which is wild. This should have been done ages ago. And yeah. It was an obvious one yeah. to go to, but he, it's funny that he did breakfast cereal before this. Yeah, and also uh, potato chips. Um, That's right. You mentioned that. Yeah. The uh, there's a bunch. The, there was a listener who came by the when I was at um, Rita's on Monday, and she gave me three bags of wrappers potato chips, and one was a uh, Snoop Dogg chips, uh, another one was little baby chips, and then Rick Ross chips. Okay. Uh, in a press release, Dre said, uh, "Together, we always try to create magic. We're having fun being creative, and everything about this product is really us. There's passion behind it, and friendship, and love, and culture." Snoop said. Uh, look at our age and look uh, look at our age and look at what we've done and we still love each other so why not do something together a lot of times people have been in a relationship for 30 years and can't talk to each other uh do uh, it's just fun to be in a partnership with people that you actually love uh gin and juice can be found at bevmo and other specialty retailers nationwide and there are plans to offer more Options in the future. Ooh wee! I didn't. This uh, takes off, yeah. I didn't realize this until just now. Perusing Snoop's uh, Instagram account, but he was just in Philly for WrestleMania. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see if uh, you can identify the movie. What about Katrina Devort? You could totally go out with Katrina Devort. I don't like Katrina. She she smells like soup. I mean, have you ever smelled her? And her whole house smells like soup. All right. Two one five two six three WMMR is the number. I guess I went a little too quick on that because. No, I think we had a caller and then lost a caller. Uh, up, how dare you? I hate you. I, I hate, hate you. everything about you. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you more than anything in this damn world. <laughs> uh, let me go to Juliana. Hi there, Juliana. Hi, how are you? Awesome. All right, Juliana, do you know what movie that is? What about Katrina DeVort? No. Oh. No? 
I've Adam. never even heard of that movie. I don't think that is it's a movie. With, yeah, it but stars the, 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 the Flackelman twins. But thank you. Yeah, I mean that he just mentions her in that uh, in that clip. Oh, mm. oh. okay, <laughs> okay. Well, then we'll go to uh, Noel. Hi, no, or is it Noel or is it Noel? Noel. Hi, hey. Noel. How you doing? Hey. Good morning, it. Good morning to see you, Noel. What movie? Juno. Juno. Yeah. 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 Hang on a second, and here is what we have for you, Noel. All right, you have a guarantee, a pair of guaranteed spots at the Pearl Jam Dark Matter Listening Party. It's going to be on Sunday, hosted by our very own Nick McElwain at the record shop in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. And each of our winners will also get a Pearl Jam prize pack with merch and items exclusive to this event. Uh, the event starts at 3 p.m. It's open to the public, but you'll be among the first to hear the entire album in its entirety before it's released, and you can pre-order Dark Matter on standard vinyl while you're at the event. All right, very, very good. All right, let's uh, play another clip. How are we doing on time here? Is this our last one, maybe, uh, Case? Or... Maybe, yeah, let's... Uh... We'll see if we can squeeze another one in. Depends on how quick the yeah. this uh, story goes. Here we go. Man, I'm getting so sick and tired of with this steel. They only give us 30 minutes to eat lunch and chill. My body aching just to get a buck. I'm sick of eating this shit off this Lunch truck. <laughs> All right, 215-263-WMMR. Next order. So the recent surge in cocoa prices to record highs is causing a ripple effect in the chocolate industry. This is bad news. Yeah, leading to significant changes in chocolate products that consumers have long cherished. Uh, chocolate makers are facing <laughs> the daunting task of adapting a more vol to a more volatile market landscape. Major companies like Mars Incorporated are responding by implementing various strategies to mitigate the impact of rising cocoa prices. Uh, one notable adaptation is the reduction in size of chocolate bars, as seen with Mars Galaxy Chocolate Bar, which underwent a 10-gram reduction without a corresponding decrease in price. Uh, the, the move aims to maintain profit margins amid escalating production costs. Uh, moreover, Chocolate manufacturers are exploring innovative ways to reduce the cocoa content okay. into their products while still satisfying customer preferences. For instance, Hershey's introduced the Chocolate Frosted Donut Kit Kat Bar, which feature, features a partial dip of chocolate instead of a full cookie. I'm down for trying that. Mm -hmm. Sure, Wait. I do like the cookie part of the Kit Kat. This, this was a Kit Kat? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think Jace had one. Okay. He got it at her, in Hershey. Did he make, notice any difference? Well, there was like a couple of them. He got the donut. He got like uh, a s'mores one, something else. There, okay. there were a few of them. Hey, um, yeah, it was candy. Of course he liked it. By the way, on the on the Twix, quick question here. I don't mean to veer off candy, but uh, the, or that particular candy. Um, I, I did notice that with the um, the Twix, that I still have some Halloween candy hanging out. Uh, and uh, on the wrappers, one says left and one says right. right. I yeah. know, yeah. I know. They trick you. Is there, uh, there's no delineation, no, though, right? No, it's, it's just the ad campaign. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The modification allows companies to incorporate less chocolate and cocoa butter into their products, thereby mitigating the financial strain caused by the soaring prices. Oh, that was the reason mm -hmm. they created it? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's just a little less chocolate. Yeah. You know what I saw this week that I'm like, ah, I didn't try it and I'm, you know, jury's out, but uh, I like Peeps, but they have chocolate Peeps um, where it's just a regular Peep oh, that's yeah. dipped in chocolate. I don't you don't know, like how, it? I don't. I didn't try it. Uh, I not, didn't. I, I wasn't you're, down you're a peep with fan? it. You're a peep fan. I um, dude, my my son loves them. Yeah. I uh, I'm like a one peep a year kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, and I do actually prefer them stale. So yeah. if I do get peeps, uh, I'll I'll perforate the the uh, I hear thingy, you. and yeah. then I'll let the air do its work for a little couple days. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So what they might do is they st might start adding, uh, they can either make it the, the chocolate bar smaller or they might add additional ingredients like uh, caramel, nuts, or fruit. Wood pulp. Uh, because of it offsets the uh, the, uh, the cost of the, it's just the chocolate. Yes, well, they, part of that is what they call shrinkflation, right? Reducing the size of the item mm -hmm. and keeping yeah. the price the same. Yeah, but, they're, but they may want to add stuff to it. So you're still getting the same weight, essentially, but just less chocolate. And it's because of their... their uh, chocolate's facing some um, harvesting issues yes. and stuff like that. So. How much is liver? I don't know. Let's look into the liver <laughs> quotient here. Yeah. All right, what movie? Man, I'm getting so sick and tired of with this steel. They only give us 30 minutes to eat lunch and chill. My body aching just to get a buck. I'm sick of eating this shit off this lunch truck. All right, let's go to Timmy. See if we can get an answer. Hey, Timmy. 
Hey, good morning. Good morning to see you, Timmy. What movie? Uh, it's Eight Mile. Eight Mile. Yeah. Damn right. Casey, what are All we right. going to give him? Timmy, you have a uh, pair of guaranteed spots at the Pearl Jam and Dark Matter listening party. It's Sunday, hosted by Nick McElwain at the Record Shop in Phoenixville, PA. And each of our winners will also get a Pearl Jam prize pack with merch and items exclusive to this event. The event starts at 3 p.m. It is open to the public, and you're going to be among the first to hear the entire album in its entirety before it's released. And you can pre-order Dark Matter on Standard Vinyl while you're at the event. All right, hang on, Timmy. Jimmy! No, Tim, no, Timmy. It's Timmy. All right, one more. Jimmy! No. <laughs> no? All right. Sorry, we got to wrap it up there. We're running out of time, man. But we got to some good stories. We gave me a bunch of great tickets. And so that means we're going to have to give the rest of this stuff away uh, throughout the course of the program. Yes, Case. Um, you know what? Uh, I just need to buy a little bit of time here real quick because we got to take a phone call uh, before we break for commercial. But uh, oh. I'm, I'm doing this event. I'm hosting an event. Um, it's a grand opening ah. of Southampton Hot Tub. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Are you going to be mm-hmm. hot tubbing it? I, you know what, man? Should I bring my trunks with yeah. me? Yeah, I, <laughs> I probably should. Maybe I will. You're going to have to show up to the event to see if I end, end up uh, in one of the hot tubs. But this is going to be tomorrow from noon to 2. Uh, I mean, the, the store is going to be open, you know, longer than that. So, uh, yeah. but please, uh, you know, if you're in the Southampton area, let me turn that music off real Sorry, quick. Case. Um, uh, please stop by and, and say hi. Southampton Hot Tub. It's going to be a 725 County Line Road in Southampton, PA. Um, I'm looking for a hot tub. Very Are cool. You? Yeah. All right. So we were gonna we were gonna take a break, and now we got to take this call, and uh, we're gonna go to Scott. Scott, why were we so were we rudely interrupted by you here? What's the story? Oh, hey, sorry to bother you at work, but I just won a thousand dollars. Awesome. I love being rudely interrupted with a winner who got a thousand dollars. Scott, where are you from, brother? Limerick, PA. From Limerick. Oh, you? All right, nice. Not, uh, not too far from my area. That's excellent, my man. Well, listen, we want you to have a fantastic weekend. You think $1,000 will do that? Oh, that'll definitely help. <laughs> excellent, brother. Thank you so much for listening. We appreciate it. We congratulate you, and we award you $1,000 with Good Morning In. All right, brother? Ah, yeah. Yeah. I think you got. I think you got cut off there. Yeah. All right. Stop! Congratulations, Scott. We'll set you up. And that's courtesy of friends at McLaughlin Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. And next chance to win, roughly an hour from now, about 10 o'clock, we will have your opportunity with Good Money It. When we come back, Tom Papa on the show, and then Martin Cove from Cobra Kai and more. Stay with us. We'd be this is joining us via Zoom. He's going to be at uh, in Reading tonight, the Santander <laughs> Arena. 8 o'clock, uh, if you would like to see a show. And uh, apparently, operators are standing by now, <laughs> as you can see via Zoom. As uh, <laughs> uh, Tom Papa, you're clear for know. runway six. <laughs> I'm Tom Flight Papa. School. <laughs> Tom Papa, clear for runway six. He's wearing a headset. Our good friend Yay! Tom Papa is on the show this morning. Hey, Tom. Hooray. Hooray. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. You know, this is how I'm in Poughkeepsie, New York right now. Oh. And this is how I do my radio show when I'm on the road. I have to wear this aviator headset. <laughs> well, because you obviously you're a smart man. It's a little bit more isolating. You can hear things a little bit better. It's, it's mm. an all-in-one kit. And if you do have to quickly work a drive-through, you can do it. <laughs> It's really just for the look of it. Yeah, <laughs> it we is had, a cool when, look. When we first started here, they they had flirted with the idea of us using uh, gear like that—a little mic that comes around connected to the headphones. But we didn't want to do it because we like to use, you know, like mic control, where you kind of yeah. like change the sound, where you move around the microphone and stuff like that. But those can come yeah, in handy. I, I do miss having a microphone because. After you know this better than anybody, after years of doing it, the mic itself starts to smell like salami. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Yes. It does. Nobody wants to go near. I would. I would not. I don't want anyone. Anybody smelling my plosion guard, and I don't want anyone else no. to smell theirs. It, <laughs> it's a disgusting thing. Yeah, they do have. See you guys. They catch everything. They, they catch food. Yeah. It's good to see you, man. How's life? What's going on with you? Life is good. Life is good. Yeah. I just did the show here in Poughkeepsie. Where my daughter's going to school and graduating this year. Oh wow. my god! What school's yeah. there? I'm sorry. Uh, I don't want to say because it's your I, daughter. 
It's my daughter. <laughs> okay. okay. Fair enough. But it's Where a college in Poughkeepsie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that, well, that's cool. That's a, you know, that's a, 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 obviously it's a wonderful achievement to get yeah. to that point. What, what kind of a degree? What's a, what's a major and what degree she got? Uh, liberal arts. Okay. And uh, she, she wants to go into show business like myself. <laughs> Which is a little challenging, and she wants to make it more challenging by going into theater. Oh, wow. So <laughs> she's going to be poor for a long time. I, I must imagine she's going to be in the same sort of predicament that, uh, that uh, uh, you know, and Michael Jordan's kids, or, you know, when you, you, you got you. I mean, how are you going to follow yeah. that, you know? A hundred percent. And she came to my show last night, and... <laughs> After he brought some of her friends, and after the show, she came backstage, and I was just like, I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm I don't know how you're going to match that set. Um, what, what are you thinking? <laughs> are you okay? Uh, yeah. Tom, I'm in the same boat right now. My uh, my daughter's a senior in high school, and she just committed to college. Uh, uh, I'm going to say it, uh, Michigan State on Saturday, and uh, she's going to pursue a theater major there as well. And uh, she, she, yeah, she wants to do all this on her own merit. In fact, she um, is a part of this national Shakespeare competition in New York City this weekend. And there is a, there's a, uh, uh, people can vote on it. And she won't let me uh, put out the link on my Twitter. No kidding. Yeah, she won't let me do it because she wow. wants to. It's you know, America's Got Thespians? Yeah, but uh, <laughs> she wants to win on her own merit. And I really do appreciate that. And I'm like, that's not how this world works, huh? That you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let no. daddy put the link up, you know, but she well, won't let me do she, it. Yeah, well, she's going to learn really quickly. I mean, she's just starting it. I, I said I had a meeting with my accountant and I was like, well, this is good news. She's going to graduate in May. And uh, so that's one tuition done, and he just started to laugh. And laugh. <laughs> He's like, "That's not the way the world works anymore." You know, when we got out, you, you bought your own car, and then you you didn't take money from your parents, and yeah. you went and got an apartment. He said, and, uh, it, "Things have changed, and you're going to be paying for her." For a long time, at least until she's married, and then you'll pay for that wedding as well. <laughs> wow. Hey, did you know, and I just heard this, that uh, if she wanted to pursue a Master of Fine Arts, that it's uh, free at Yale? If I mean, you got to get in, but did you know that? No. it's uh, we, tr we tend to pretend that the Ivy League schools don't exist. <laughs> it's a good just choice. To prevent, <laughs> just to prevent heartache in the house. Right. Yeah. I, the, 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 I remember uh, the one college scholarship I got was simply because I happened to live in an area where that college wanted to build another school. So they bribed the town by providing scholarships. Really? Yeah, that was my because of my dazzling academic achievements. But uh, <laughs> uh, I wanted to uh, ask you, and and I, I saw this pop up on your Instagram account. I remember when it popped up. There was a, a thing that popped up about about you, and it was very touching about love, and and it seemed to suggest on the initial reading. I thought to myself, Is Tom Papa? getting divorced or what are the deals and then you quickly added a clarification to it did you get a kind of a, 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 were you surprised at the response to what you posted yeah i don't i didn't know it my social media guys you know they post my stand up and every once in a while they'll post something from one of my books yeah they'll just take a quote from one of my books and post it and while it was very well written it was uh, out of context it seemed I had no idea. I didn't even know they were posting it. And then my wife walked into my office and said, my sister just called and wanted to know if we're getting divorced. Because <laughs> uh, it, it was like about loving and like at least we gave it a try or something like that. Yes. And, uh, and I was like, your sister's so sensitive. I don't know what you're talking about. And then I went and checked the comments and there were a lot of comments like, hang in there, buddy. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Because I, I, we know you, and I'm like, wow, I, I can't believe that he seems completely happy. And what, what, what could have happened? And, and it so it did make it did make me think because of that reaction. I mean, my whole stand up is about family life. And yeah, stuff. it would be very odd if I got divorced, but it definitely. I mean, just from posting a one sentence thing, <laughs> it got a lot of. Con I'm like, maybe we should drop what. Let maybe I shouldn't tell people <laughs> that. We're okay. Let's just build it up and let them know in my next Netflix special I'm going to have a big reveal. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Sell it big time.
Uh, but she was so pissed at me that I had to uh, I had to put a comment up there. <laughs> yes, or we would have really gotten divorced. <laughs> Tom, so obviously the big news story was yesterday. You know, OJ OJ Simpson died. Um, were you doing stand up when the whole car chase happened, or the trial, or any of that stuff? Because I mean, it mm. permeated everything. What year was what year 92, was the verdict? Ninety four. Ninety four is when the verdict was. Yeah. No, ninety five is the verdict. 90, oh, I'm sorry. Ninety four was the murder. Yeah. So I did my first stand up set in ninety three. Okay. Oh, when you said the big news, I thought you meant about the Golden Bachelor getting. Divorced. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yes, they're getting divorced. I know I just the saw Golden that. Bachelor. Oh, so oh. sad. I don't know what has hit me harder. <laughs> uh, I know. Yeah. Just this poor. I mean, it was so great to watch the whole show just to see. People with no liquid in their bodies anymore making out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then to think that it wouldn't work is just so upsetting. Do you know what? I, I was telling Preston about this because, I, I, you know, obviously there's a conga line of these shows and you just get totally immune to them. And then I thought, well, here's a conceit that's interesting. You would assume that the people are further along in life and maybe they will actually prize and cherish the things that make... Uh, that really make the impact to carry over. And after the first two or three episodes, it degenerated into exactly the same thing that they all were. It doesn't <laughs> exactly. matter. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter. It's just a bunch of oldies <laughs> taking off their diapers and trying to get it on. <laughs> mm. So sad. But the OJ thing, I was, I had just started in 93, like in the summer of 93. So it was pretty fresh, but I don't remember having any hot takes as a young comic <laughs> yeah. getting up once every three months. <laughs> <laughs> on on the on the OJ, um, but man, he he's. I never saw a reaction on social media where people just didn't feel anything. I know it, it, we were talking about it this morning, and it's um, because listen, I, I think it. You know, no matter where you stand on it, there's uh, uh, th there are about four hundred core stories and about twelve hundred connected stories to this moment in pop culture time and criminal time and. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and it, it's it's almost too much to process because, um, you know, obviously, you know, we're it's sad that now he the, the, the hunt for the murderer has to be suspended because yeah. he was spearheading he was, that. Right. I heard he was getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> Him and the Golden Bachelor should have joined up and yeah. <laughs> ran out of the strike. But I was team. watching that uh, O.J. Simpson American story or yes. American Made or yeah. something last night. And, man, it is a fascinating story. I mean, it's such he was so beloved and so talented and just a bright light. And for it to flip like that, yeah. I mean, and I just, think, I think, in a, in a way, we were talking about this, and I've always perceived it as, as sort of a <clears throat> Shakespearean outcome because, mm -hmm. oddly enough, he even though he beat double murder, he set in thing the motion that robbed him of what he really wanted, which was the adulation and the celebration that he had before. He could never reclaim yeah. that. Do you think that he? Was able to convince himself that he didn't do it. I, I I wonder because if you're a sociopath, you might be able to pull that off. I think some people are capable of doing that. I don't mm. know if he did yeah. or not, but yeah, that is an interesting concept. Like I still believe I have hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I really believe it. Like when I get out of the shower, I still uh, like shake my head yeah, back. Yeah. Like <laughs> you're <laughs> like Bon Jovi, slippery when what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I really believe it. It's weird what the brain can do. Yeah. yeah. When you when you need you, but I mean, we talked about also the fact that he beat a double murder charge and then got did nine years of jail time. For attempting to steal back his own sports memorabilia. Well, that was definitely, yeah. they came and they they served him justice. It, yeah. was, it was like when a mob boss goes away <laughs> for uh, tax evasion or something. Yeah. Like that, right. you know? <laughs> they, yeah, they really let it. But I remember in northern New Jersey, like I lived in New York and came from Jersey. And he just, when he got off, he just started showing up at golf clubs. Yes. Yep. He just started showing up like, hey, guys, you need someone for the foursome? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> in, in a way that he, he was he was trying mightily, I know, initially on social media to make that a thing where he, th he figured, well, maybe I can come in through a YouTube thing or a podcasting or whatever. Yeah. And and um, it was not received warmly. Yeah. No, it wasn't. It was really uh, 
It was really shocking. Um, Another thing that was shocking was that when I was looking at Instagram this morning just to catch up on all of that, uh, there was an ad for water beds. And I'm so shocked <laughs> that those didn't catch on. Yeah. <laughs> Like they were such a. I remember when my neighbor had one. It was like we all went over and we laid on it and floated up and down. And like I'm on the road a lot. I'm in this gorgeous residence in right now. There was not one room with an option. <laughs> not <laughs> water bed. Nothing. For Preston a water had bed. one. Preston oh my had a God. water bed. I had a free flowing water bed for years, and I liked it for about one of those years, <laughs> and then I just tolerated it the rest of the time. Seemed like a good idea. What went wrong? It fights you. It fights you to move around. As uh, as you, the, the tidal movements uh, right. actually are counterproductive. And you, you know, if you need to move on the bed, you push down. You don't get the resistance helping you. The right. leverage that you need to actually move around. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. And it's so not I should be sexy. happy at the residence in yeah, there. Yes, that my thrilled. mattress has the the indent of all the businessmen. <laughs> <laughs> Of course. Tom, <laughs> I wanted to ask you about something that you're well uh, versed in, and that is is bread. Obviously, we've had many discussions with you about bread, but we've talked about this before. We had a, um, I, I wanted to know which restaurant that uh. you go to has the finest bread option Ooh. that you can think of, because we've discussed this many times on the air. Oh, man. Well, it's not going to mean that much to you, but in L.A., there's this place called Stanley's, okay. which is just an American food kind of place. You know, they've got burgers and salmon and like, you know, regular stuff and salads. And Americana. Americana stuff. And uh, but man, they give you this little sack of bread in a in a brown paper bag. Hmm. And it is really i mean i'm really a bread snob yes. so i'll always have like a comment like yeah this is fine <laughs> <laughs> but this one is the crust is so thin but but firm okay and crunchy I'm with and you. the inside just when you pull it it just kind of like stretches <sighs> like taffy almost it's just so damn good have you have you ever been to a brazilian steakhouse before <laughs> Yes. And have you had that, whatever that cheese bread, it, it doesn't, it, it's got it's a gooeyness so to it weird. that's not cheese. You know what I'm talking about? It's almost about? like a dumpling. I, you know what? I've never had it, but literally oh. last night on stage in Poughkeepsie, mm -hmm. a woman was talking to me. She said, I can't eat bread. I have to eat gluten-free bread. And the only go good bread I get is Brazilian cheese bread. And I had never heard it <laughs> until then. And now you're talking about yeah. it. It's you need to have it. amazing. Yep. Really? We yep. And there's something to say when you get your everyone gets their own bread in that little uh, that little bag you talked about the brown bag. I love that the bread inside could just be mediocre, but as long as I get my own bag, I'm good. I know the power of a paper bag is really profound, not just for bread. Like if you just were walking around with like a sack and it gets like a little worn and it keeps but still stays together, it's like that is. One time I was at an airport and I'm waiting to get on. I was just starting stand up really on the road. And Stephen Wright, the great Stephen Wright, came mm -hmm. off the plane. And I was like, oh, my God, I think that's Stephen Wright. And all he was carrying was a brown paper bag. Wow. <laughs> no luggage. Uh -huh. Just a brown paper bag. <laughs> Perfect. So I, awesome. I, 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 unless... I was... I looked at it like I looked at it like someone who had fancy to me luggage. I was like, <laughs> one day I'm going to travel like that. We used to have before all of the, the 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 everything came crashing down on him. Ron Jeremy, he would come to town and he traveled literally with like a CBS plastic bag, and I, that was it. That was all he took. Yeah. Oh my God. When your penis is that big, you don't really. <laughs> Have to don't show need off much in else. any other way. <laughs> yeah. um, a quick question, because the the yes. uh, the Jerry Seinfeld um, uh, film uh, Unfrosted, mm. uh, and your your close friends. Do you uh, do you make an appearance in that, or were you uh, part I of that? I don't. At all? Huh. I don't. I'm not. I'm not a part of that film. I'm going to interview him and some of the cast for my radio show, and uh, you know Jerry's done so much for me. I can't be anything but grateful. You know my. My wife was like, why didn't he put you in that movie? And I was like, I can't. He, he's not responsible to put me in everything right. that he does. You yeah. know what I mean? And uh, so I, I, you know, I maintain a very uh, Christian Zen way about it. And it's like, sure, you you always want to be in a movie. Right. And then when your friend puts, is making a movie, it makes you want it a, a little bit more. And But I am was cool with it. And then they gave sent me the 
trailer for it because I'm going to do this interview. And they put so many comedians in it that they had to list all the names really quickly, kind of like a drug ad, like the right, mm, right, like the symptoms. There were so many comedians that they had to like buzz through, and I was like, "All right, <laughs> I should be in that." <laughs> <laughs> I was being I'm like, "Yeah, Wait I was a gonna, minute. yeah." <laughs> Kyle Dunnigan. What the hell? <laughs> Kyle Dunnigan has multiple roles in it. He plays Johnny Carson. <laughs> yeah. In it. Well, yeah, that was a bad example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We but had no, I'm not in it. We had Jerry on last year. First time we ever spoke to him. Yes. Uh, yeah. He came oh, in to no do way. a stand-up show. And uh, I, to, uh, to be honest, I was a little nervous about the interview because uh, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if we were going to get a conversive Jerry or not or if he was going to be standoffish at questions. And he was great. He was lovely. And we were very oh, happy about amazing. that. amazing. Yeah. What, what was he promoting? He, was, he, he had a show in yeah. town. He was doing a stand-up show. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he, he was cool. struggling at that time. He was struggling, as, and he told us whether or not he should put you in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the problem is, you know, you guys always say I'm your favorite comedian, and he probably heard that. Yeah. He like, it, I mean, it seems like a coincidence that he doesn't put me in the movie, and then he just shows up on your show. Yeah. Wow, yeah, you're right. There we go. You it's know? all coming together. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. I, you, is it, are you doing this uh, this thing as part of the the Netflix as a joke? Um, they have the big thing coming up in in LA. Is that is that what that's attached to, or is it just? Yeah, now? it is. Yeah, it's going to be a part of that. And then I'm doing a, a couple of my own shows and some theaters out there. And yeah, it's a big deal. I mean, it's so many people are in that festival. It's yeah. wild. Yeah. Is it? It's, is it? For you, is it? Does it become overwhelming, or do you love the sort of uh, familial? big Woodstock-like gathering. It's very cool. You get to cross paths with other headliners and stuff. And But it's kind of, it's the odd thing about it, like when you go to Montreal, at the end of the night, Montreal's so small, everybody like meets up at the same bar and you ha all hang out and see each other. In L.A., right. it's so spread out. Like, you know this is going on and you know so-and-so's at the Hollywood Bowl and Cat Williams is over there, but you just hear about it. You don't see huh. it. It's mm. like... It, it, you see it on social media more than you feel it. At the end of the night, everyone goes their separate ways. Right. And there's there's very few, like, there is this very cool thing that happened at the first one, and I think it's happening again, where Ted Sarandos, the the leader of Netflix, had a uh, brunch barbecue kind of a thing uh, at his house, and it was like every single comedian from the festival was, so you're like sitting there, getting like some potato salad and it's Jerry and it's Gaffigan and Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle and Sarah Silverman and wow. Wanda Sykes and Steve Martin and Lily Tomlin. And it's just wow. like, I mean, it was <laughs> so even like the biggest of the bigs were looking around like, this is cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what you want, right? Yeah. yeah it was yeah. really, really fun. That's awesome. But I have to figure out, I got to spend some time thinking about what to wear because Last time I thought it was going to be a little more casual, and I just wore this like crummy t shirt, and everybody was mocking me. No. So I, I don't know what's the proper barbecue wear. <laughs> the people where when you go in with a bunch of comedians, you don't get go, abused. Go smart casual. Go uh, go jeans and a nice shirt, and you know something without a, a, a design on it. It should be good. I'm, I'm so bad in these situations. You know, I'll do that, and then I'll and then I'll spill something right on my crotch, <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, everybody thinks I peed myself. Yeah. And then, and then someone millennial will point at it, and it's. <laughs> It's just the way I roll. It, yeah. never, it never goes easy for me in these situations. Do you ask your wife for uh, fashion advice when you're going to things like this? Uh, no, I just kind of like show up and sh and she'll, if it's really bad, she'll make a comment. But does she ever? I just, I, you know what I mean? Like there's just these social interactions and I, 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 I find myself in these situations and think I'm going to do well. And I went to Bud Friedman's memorial. You know, Right, the, the comics uh, store. From the improv. Oh, the improv. He, he, he's he's the guy who wore the monocle. the monocle. Yes, yes. Yeah. And he, he passed away, and he had his, his funeral in L.A., and I went to it, and I was, you know, it was a nice thing to be at, and there's all these famous comedians and stuff, and on my way back to my car, like a long line in a driveway, and you got to go back to your car, and I'm just walking by myself, and Larry David is there in his electric car, and he 
rolls down his window, and I'm, I've met him a couple times, and he's like, how do I get out of here? <laughs> and I started, and I started uh, laughing. Uh, 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 uh. I started laughing like we're doing a bit, and I was like, oh, yeah, you just got to go up to that gravestone and make a left. And he, like, paused and looked at me and was like, how do I get out of here? <laughs> I was like, oh, he uh, really needs help. <laughs> but that happens to me all the time. I think we're doing a bit. Yeah. I'm in oh, I'm driving away like, what an idiot. <laughs> We we can commiserate whenever we get invited to things of any you know we or we get oh, an award or something and we, we we are completely out of place. We're sure there's some sort of mistake that has been made in the judging process, or yeah. it just never feels right. No, <laughs> no, you're good. I'm just more comfortable doing what we're doing right now. Yes, <laughs> yes. Unfortunately, we got to wrap up what we're doing right now, Tom. We got a couple other things we got to get to, but we just want to point people in the direction of your show tonight uh, in Reading, uh, the Santander. I can never say Santander. That. You can't help it. Santander. There are people that live in Reading, right? Yes. There are oh, lots yeah. of people that live in Reading. And people travel from here all yeah. the time to go see shows there. It's a great venue. They do. Yeah. And they, okay. they can hear us in Reading. So yes. yes. I was, oh, good. Because I was getting the feeling that maybe they'd all left. <laughs> No, they're going to flock there tonight. <laughs> yes. For the event. Awesome. All That's right. Well, I'm going to big surprise it. to you. Uh, so <laughs> that'll be at 8 o'clock tonight, Santana <laughs> Arena. Always great to talk to you, sir. Have a great weekend and a great show tonight, all right? Love you guys. Love See you too. too. Tom yes. Papa! Yeah. On the program. All right. And it looks like perfect timing because our uh, Xfinity mobile guest line is ringing. Yes. And that means the phone is ringing. <laughs> Uh, that we will have a couple other guests that we're going to welcome on board. Real quick, I'll take this moment to remind you that we are less than 30 minutes away uh, from your next chance to win a thousand bucks with the Good Money It promotion. So uh, do not miss out on the word that we will be giving to you. And Marissa is waving us off. It looks like no interview. Sorry. Aww. So anyway. Anyhow, uh, so we're, yeah, we're going to have a chance for you to win uh, coming up in just a little bit. So they're waving off. Oh, that sucks. Hang on a second, Marissa. Um, so Jesse, Martin's son, was on the line. Um, Martin was not able to be found at the moment. They were shooting till late. Oh. So they're going to reschedule. Okay. Okay. Right, we'll talk to him another time. That That's right. You know what? I got some uh, junk drawer stuff. Ooh, what? Yeah, what? I do. On a Friday? We can work. We can work it's on the, the fly. Preston's cleaning out his junk drawer. Getting things out of his junk drawer. Finding stuff here in the junk drawer. Let me rummage around like and find wind. something in the actual drawer, the physical drawer that we have here. Uh, ah, yes, this is worth passing along. Tennessee lawmakers uh, uh, the, uh, have sent the first cousin marriage ban to the governor. Yeah. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, in Tennessee, you can marry your first cousin. Legally. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the bill. I'm married to my uh, The bill that would ban marriage between first cousins in Tennessee has been sent to Governor Bill Lee to be signed into law, but not before there was resistance to the legislation. Let me ask you, because there, there was a story that came out of um, out of Europe. It might have been England. Uh, but uh, there was uh, there was a um, uh, an extensive mm, study made. Are there... I, this is what I've always believed. There are genetic liabilities, right, to... No, be, if there are genetic liabilities, they are more uh, likely apt to, to show up. To, okay. Right. So you can marry a cousin yep. and have uh, sex with your cousin all you want and, and have progeny. But um, if that cousin has uh, some genetic predisposition, predispositions to genetic uh, issues, and you do, the odds go up exponentially. Gotcha. Correct. So it's not quite the way it has... We had thought it had been, but there's still risk. I mean, you know what? Maybe um, leave the family barbecue mm. and look for another woman to date. Mm -hmm. uh, while it was an overwhelming vote, there were two uh, Republicans who voted against the measure in the state house, including Representative Gino Bolson, who introduced an amendment to allow first cousin marriages. He raised all three of his arms. If the couple gets counseling from a genetic counselor first. Oh, well, that may, okay. Well, maybe, so, so to your point, Nick, you don't want to exacerbate potential genetic issues. But it might be worth doing that. But but outside of genetic issues, there's there's a family issue. You know what well, I mean? It, it, it refines your Christmas list. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. If you think yeah. about that. Bolso has previously shared a story in a committee hearing about his grandparents who he said were first cousins from Italy who traveled to Tennessee to get married. I mean, stop and think about the history of, the, of this. If you talk about, if it's not first cousins, it's mm -hmm. the incestuous nature of the royal family itself. Right. You know, and then that, that was a, uh, or you look at the Habsburgs. Uh, they were all about um, keeping that line mm -hmm. as pure as they could. And in so doing... So I think the Habsburgs had uh, pronounced chins, like Jay Leno type chins. Okay, yeah. Uh, Rochelle has turned me on to the show Following Your Roots, uh, which is now it's a great on show. Pluto is that the Pluto yeah. TV? Yeah, yeah. Um, great show. It's been on for several seasons, and yeah. I've only casually seen part of one here and there. So, but we watched one the other day, and it was uh, Kevin Bacon and Kira Cedric who were right. married. And they had, for the longest time, they had joked that they were probably cousins with each other. Right. They are cousins <laughs> with each other that they found. How many out. levels now, back? They're like, you know, a ways. Yeah, yeah, Like yeah. six or seventh cousins or something. It's quite removed. Uh, but it was still funny to them find out. They also had a lot of, like, um, there was a lot of a prestigiousness in their backgrounds, too. The Sedgwicks were very yes. well-to-do and came from a line of, I believe, uh, royalty. And then the Bacons, they went into the history of the Bacons in Philadelphia. And it's huge, yeah. man. It's way bigger than we had ever known yeah, about Bacon, his right? history. Yeah, his dad was a was a developer, yeah. helped develop the skyline of Philadelphia. and uh, But also, it goes back further, Nick, into when they settled... Bacon. Um, in the in the uh, uh, in the days of William Penn, you know, and stuff like wow. that. So it was it goes pretty back cool. That far? Yeah, that's it, awesome. well, they, they, sometimes Nick and they they did it. I forget who they did it with, but it, it uh, might have been Lavar. It might have been anyway. They took back all to way back to Africa, to generations back in Africa, mm -hmm. um, and this is the whole conceit of the show. And sometimes, like uh, Ben Affleck found out he had uh, Ben Affleck wasn't a slave owner, but he found out there was you know that was slavery was in his past. Uh, in, in the family's history, but I mean, they can they can find out quite a lot in most of these stories that I've seen so yeah. far. You will they will they will get into slavery, yeah, uh, in in the background, um, uh, Jews escaping persecution, right, um, and a lot of things like that. And some of it is on either side. You either had slavery in your uh, background where there were slave you you have slaves that you were related to or slave owners that you were related to, or uh, the same thing with the uh, persecution of Jews. You know, is it one way or the other and you kind of look back at it however you like to and, and disseminate that information. But it's all interesting. And I've never really cared about genealogy that much. But now I'm starting I to get know, slightly that, interested in it. I know, and this show is, is part and parcel. But uh, you, you never see anyone go, yeah! Right, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but they're, they're, uh, the, uh, the, I feel most traumatic I saw, I forget what the celebrity was, but it was revealed that uh, two, two grandfathers <laughs> back Elvis impersonator. Oh, so, yeah. my God, the wow. poor thing. Yeah. Did Could you see the it. one, uh, Preston, <laughs> where... Um, Larry David and Bernie Sanders are related no. to each other. Yes. No, and but that's uh, Larry perfect. does the best Bernie Sanders out there. <laughs> and and so they both they showed both of their reactions to finding out that they were related to one another. Oh, and they both excellent. couldn't stop laughing. It was great. All right. Well, in Tennessee, if you're first cousins, you can't get married. It's official. It was until now. All right, let me see what else I can say. Um, here you go. This one. You guys, I'm sure, saw this. At, uh, in an effort to make Instagram a safer place for teens, parent company Meta is working on various Child safety initiatives, and in the next few weeks, they're going to testing a new, test a new feature to the uh, to help curb instances of financial sextortion, uh, which the FBI, excuse me, recently reported is on the rise. Financial sextortion involves scammers convincing victims to send nude pictures and then threatening to release them online unless victims send money or gift cards. So I saw a story about this, President. I didn't quite understand if so. It is uh, basically they will pose as someone or they'll hack and pose as someone that they know or uh, what, how, how are they securing these pictures? Well, I don't know how they're securing it. Well, so what, what Instagram is going to do, uh, they are trying to make it harder for scammers to prey on the victims with new safety features, which include blurring explicit images sent via direct messages uh -huh. and notifying users if they've interacted with accounts known for engaging in sextortion. All right. Uh, the features will be rolled out uh, to select test groups for coming to users across the platform. So they're doing, you know, it's not an end all, but they're trying to get some things put in place that can help curb this. This is in conjunction with Meta's newly announced OnlyFans competitor. No. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, but I do, man, from time to time, Instagram is getting a little bit more 
uh -huh. the, uh, free with the, with the how close they're cutting the corners as far no, as I, I've explicit. noticed that. I've seen full I don't hate it. boobs with uh, with nips. With nips. Yeah, yep. I mean now. I don't know why, uh, but it ends up in my feed from time to time, women breastfeeding. But, like, it's just them full-on, like, topless. Yeah, I, I don't know why. Huh. You, Maybe it's because I like milky jugs. I don't <laughs> know. Jugs. Yeah. Maybe. Because you visit milkyjugs.com. Yeah. Um, X is the Wild West. Twitter. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, it, it, oh, yeah. And, and not only... Often it will not even require a click. Something will just come up, and it can be gruesome. It can be, uh, you know, a, 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 a horrible scene or whatever, and it just pops right up. Yep. All right. Uh, let me see another thing. Uh, I... And another thing. <laughs> we do need to do. <laughs> and another thing. All right. I found something. Uh, I thought this was a sweet story uh, to pass along. Something nice uh, yeah. for you guys to hear. Uh, while renovating part of a converted home in Springville, Utah, uh, to turn it into a coffee shop, a gentleman named Stephen Park came across a note that was hidden inside of a wall. And it reads, Robert Moffin Barron moved in house when nine months old in fall of 1922. And placed note here. Uh, September 6, 1932. And as a social studies uh, teacher, Park couldn't ignore the note and he needed to learn more, so he did some internet investigating and soon discovered the note's author had a sister, 100-year-old Dorothy Baron Switzer, who lives a few hours away in St. George, Utah. Mm -hmm. So after learning about the note, she agreed to travel to Springville to visit the home that she grew up in and get her brother's note. Uh, the centenarian was overjoyed to visit her childhood home along with her daughter and granddaughter, and she was thankful to have the note from her brother, Bob, who died in 1945, who was only 23. Oh. He fought uh, uh, for the Allies wow. in, in Italy during World War II. That was a lot of love <laughs> in the family. <laughs> Uh, Switzer has fond memories of her brother and says that she misses him every day. I thought that was pretty sweet. That is cool. Yeah. yeah. That, that they found this note, this hidden note in the wall. Who are you? Yeah. Why also, did I listen? I'm not into your kinky crap. <laughs> I thought that was sweet. D's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> She's a surly old woman. Yeah. Just, just hates everybody. I got a 357 in the bedroom. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. How about this? Uh, on the next visit to our closest celestial neighbor, the moon, the U.S. will be accompanied by one of its closest friends, Japan. A Japanese astro astronaut will, be, will become the first non-American ever to land on the moon. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, President Biden announced on Wednesday during a news conference with Japanese Prime Minister uh, Fumio Kishida. And the two leaders affirmed that the science and education ties between their two countries, uh, those ties, they said, Biden said, stretch up to the moon, where two Japanese astronauts will join future American missions, and one will become the first non-American ever to land on the moon. Uh, for the first time since the early 70s, NASA is aiming to send so small. astronaut missions to the moon in the coming years under the Artemis program. And the space agency is also looking to establish a scientific lunar base that could help set the stage for future missions to Mars. God, I hope I live long enough to see a lunar base. Yep. Uh, dozens of companies, spacecraft, and countries are involved in the effort. And Japan will provide and maintain pressurized uh, a pressurized rover uh, to support astronauts living and working on the moon. Um, and the pressurized rover is intended to enable astronauts to travel farther and work for longer periods on the lunar surface. So that's pretty cool. I mean, again, look at the, the recent, uh, the, the landing that didn't go quite right with the, uh, the right. satellite. So yeah, stuff can still yeah, happen. Yeah, still shows that stuff can happen. But we yeah. are should rightly believe that there have been enough advancements that our next trip to the moon yeah. will be something that will be... Incredibly amazing. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for that to eventually take place. I don't know when that's happening. That's one thing that was not in that story, and I didn't have time to uh, uh, to look up. But when the Artemis program is going to get underway, it's not in that far of the it's, future. No, right? it's not. It's well, not. I think they pushed a few of them back, Steve, in part because of uh, one of the more recent failures. Um, like there was supposed to be stuff this year, and I think they pushed it back to 2025. Mm. Uh, but I'll see if I can find it, Chris. Mm. Okay. Uh, one more thing. And another and thing. another thing. Uh, let me see. Steve, I had something here that you... My mic. Go elbow deep. 
It had to do with popcorn. Oh! Oh, yeah, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> I do love find popcorn. It. Uh, a guy named Chris Randazzo has spent the last 10 years of his life tinkering with an idea. Uh, inside a warehouse near the Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport, a 400-ton press is turning that idea into an invention which could change the way people enjoy popcorn at the theater, in the car, or any spot. I call it a bucket. With a cup holder. No. Oh. He calls it the hands-free popcorn bucket. Uh, they, well, this actually, I um, I bet you I know where this is going, and I'm liking it. Uh, Randazzo and his wife were at a movie theater in 2014. She's a uh, cervical cancer survivor who learned that she would never be able to get pregnant. He said, we went to the movies to escape the horrible news. And he said, I thought to myself, if there's only a way, I could just put this bucket in the cup holder, and then I could put my arm around my wife and still eat the popcorn. That was my eureka moment. And he developed his first prototype in 2014. He cut a soda cup in half and glued it to the bottom of a greasy popcorn tub. And he said it wasn't rocket science. Uh, so he was surprised when he couldn't find another cup holder friendly bucket on the internet. No one had ever come up with the idea. So before. this is that that lightning, right? Yeah. So this happens, and then if you stop and think about it, this is the popcorn equivalent of the Stanley Cup. Yeah, kind of like that. It, it, for it to fit in the cup holder, yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. But I, he's been working on this for a decade, wow. dude. Like nobody has touched this. I was thinking that when you said hands free, uh, I was thinking so that he didn't actually have to take the like a device that would feed it into your mouth, yeah. like a conveyor belt that ran up from the bucket. Yeah. So uh, I would think like <laughs> what I would do is perhaps, um. <laughs> I, what you could do here is, is <laughs> at the top of the bucket where you would dip your hands in there, basically have the same type of contraption so you could just basically drink your popcorn. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, 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 I do that anyway. That yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Say it again. Uh, well, um, you, you, everybody jumped in and, 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 and it took me off of my, uh, my center game. here. Okay. We were having fun. Sorry. No, 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 no. Okay. I, I, All right. I, I'm not mad. All right. I'm not mad. Oh, you me. better right. not be mad, mister. Um, so uh, just a, a contraption or a device to put on top of the popcorn bucket so that you wouldn't have to use your, especially if you put butter on your popcorn, you your buttery fingers yep. or whatever. Basically like a, a funnel, a Case. but upside oh, down. I see what you're saying. What if it, you had your popcorn popcorn bucket had a like a, a funnel like a, like a funnel at the end like a that spout. like so a pitcher right yeah, like a, a pitcher yeah yeah that could work too. would that not work that, that would work. i will put one million dollars into this okay if just you give it to me i promise you it'll <laughs> it'll go to good All use right. what uh what Where'd else you get would, the swim spa <laughs> what else would you guys put in this device because i'm thinking m&ms m&ms oh. mm. stuff that you know cheese, I, cheese balls bourbon. cheese balls would be good cheese balls bourbon sure yeah. for drinking yeah uh, I don't know. Uh, you, oh, you mean to use it other than just for popcorn? Uh-huh. Oh, there's lots of things. Oh, I was talking about my invention. It's stuff um, you don't want to touch. Well, both of these inventions. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, M&M's would be perfect for that. Um, a lot of M&M's. That right. would be a lot. You could but, maybe get a smaller. Hey, you're watching a movie. You should have a pound of M&M's. When you, all right, when you go to the movies uh, and you buy M&M's, uh, I buy peanut M&M's, what Me size too. do you get? Oh, it, the whatever they sell at Wawa. <laughs> the the share, shareables, yeah. The shareables I don't, size? I don't like, I don't. Oh, you don't buy them in the theater because no, yeah, yeah, now, yeah, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. at at the airport they sell them in like looks like a woman's small purse. Uh -huh. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. And that's they're, good. They're only thirty seven dollars <laughs> at the airport. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, and they're only one serving. <laughs> buy them in an Acme, mm -hmm. and uh, that's one serving at a movie theater. I right. tell you what, though, I'm a sucker. I, I love, and you know, it's just, you talk about the uh, psychosomatic <laughs> aspect of buying vendor food from at the theater. The popcorn tastes better, and the mm -hmm. snow caps taste better, and the uh, you know oh the, snow caps yeah you better put those in that device too it the, should you're paying for the price of a right. you know, a T bone steak I know yeah and I will say though I, and listen I, I like the uh, the popcorn at AMC and Regal but the the Philadelphia Film Society the PFS ones like yeah. the, the Ritzes yeah. yeah. They're the best ones. Really? That's the best popcorn. In fact, I All think right. the uh, Bryn Mawr Film Institute, I think, is the best movie theater popcorn I've I'd ever I'd like had. to talk to your popcorn maker. <laughs> All right, real quick. I know we got to wrap up here, but Randozo remembers a patent lawyer telling him that his innovative bucket uh, began uh, telling him that uh, you, he said, I think you got something. This is what the patent lawyer said to him. So uh, the bucket began to take shape. He applied for and received two patents and began working with overseas manufacturers. It turned out to be logistical nightmare during COVID. 
And uh, in many years later, he and his wife uh, found an American manufacturer willing to work with his small business. Uh, Pacific Plastic Technology can produce close to 70 hands-free popcorn buckets an hour. And he said they're thick and sturdy and they are built to last. So he's trying to get the the chains on board this. He, he had two runs, no, uh, three different Shark Tank casting calls, but never made it into the final round. Uh, so I'd see it as this. It'd be a, a, va- a premium way to purchase the, the popcorn. In other words, this wouldn't be the way you would summarily dispense popcorn from here on in. You'd probably bring your own. Right. And then get charged a certain amount or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. All right. Well, anyway, I thought it was an interesting idea and uh, maybe it'll take off. We'll have to find out. All right. That's all we got to go. Yeah, that's it. It was a junk drawer. Preston's closing up his junk drawer. There's nothing left here in the junk drawer. Until next time, that was the junk drawer. Yeah. All righty, uh, we should take a quick break. Come back in a second because we got money to give away, gang. It is good money it. And we also have the bizarre file. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Uh, WMMR Philadelphia. It's time for a good money it keyword. Yep, that word is plentiful. P-L-I-N-T. No, don't do that. P-L-E-N-T-I-F-U-L. P. L E N T I F U L, plentiful. <laughs> and you have until 15 minutes after the hour to enter it. Three ways to do it uh, through WMMR.com, the MMR app, or you can text it to our special contest short code number we have set up, which is 45911. One random entry wins $1,000 in our company wide contest. And each winner gets a call from Beasley, so make sure that you answer your phone. The contest rules are available at WMMR.com and it's brought to you by McLaughlin Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. So again, the word is plentiful, P-L-E-N-T-I-F-U-L. Enter that now. We'll get our final look at traffic. So, Kathy, what's going on? We still have delays on the Schuylkill Eastbound Montgomery to Spring Garden, Westbound University to South Street, City to Belmont. The Blue Road southbound slows media bypass to Baltimore Pike. 95, looks like that's pretty much cleared out at this point. The Vines still slow westbound. Aids to Broad, the Ben Franklin Parkway to the Schuylkill eastbound, the Schuylkill to Broad. New Jersey Turnpike southbound at 73, an accident off to the shoulder. This traffic report brought to you by Allstate. Some people just know there's a better way to do things like bundling your home and auto insurance with Allstate. Visit Allstate.com or call for a quote today. And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. All right, here we go. Let's go. Bizarre. WMMR presents Bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre. Bizarre File. All right, brought to you this morning by uh, Leukemia Lymphoma Society. You can join Nick McWayne and Team Luke in the LLS Big Climb Philly on Saturday, May 11th at Lincoln Financial Field. Uh, to register or donate, you can go to PrestonAndSteve.com. All right, <clears throat> don't try this. That's uh, the lesson here. This is in Colorado. A skier mm-hmm. has died after attempting a stunt on Tuesday. It took place on uh, Berthoud Pass. The um, dispatchers received a 911 call reporting a skiing accident on Highway 40. It was reported a 21-year-old man was unconscious and not breathing, and a bystander was administering CPR. Emergency responders arrived. They determined that the man was indeed dead. The investigation revealed he was attempting a high-risk skiing stunt by trying to clear the width of the highway. Oh, and he didn't have the speed and distance that he needed and landed on the pavement. He was wearing a helmet and other protective gear, but it was not enough. So he was trying to jump over at a full highway on skis and so, pay the price. There's, a, I think it's a YouTube channel where people have done this. Uh, and uh, it looks dangerous as all hell. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So uh, there are consequences to really not tricky, doing it. tricky yeah. stunts like that. The coroner's office identified the man as Dallas LeBeau. Uh, here's a story, and it's a switch on things, and I put this in here on purpose for a good friend, Gene Simmons. An annual rescue center mm. says that the power of social media has been a massive help in finding a home for almost 1,400 chickens. Wow. Yes. Normally, I give you these tragic I stories. remember <laughs> you. Uh, that these have been saved. Copper Shell Animal Rescue in Wiltshire was... Uh, I will. 
price of a basket of chicken fingers. <laughs> you could save a chicken. Uh, they really? were approached by a local farmer about rehoming the birds with just six days' notice. The 15-month-old hens used for egg laying had been destined for the abattoir. And for our Jewish chickens, we place them close to a synagogue. And uh, Jenna Court, who is with the founder of Copper Shell, said we've had quite a few schools, nurseries, and old people's homes get in touch. Uh, Copper Shell said the farmer needed to clear the barn for younger chickens to keep up with the rates. Of it's egg. always the way. It's always the younger chickens. Egg production. And she said we managed to rehome 4,000 a month ago, but we never did it in such short notice. We work with the farmer, and there's a big push towards the ethical approach. And it makes the farmer feel better than oh. having to call them. That's so great. everybody wins. So it's like a chicken retirement home. I thought that was kind of a nice story about chickens. Does as, my heart good. As opposed to the other ones we normally get. I'm going to remove get. my face and dot my tears. <laughs> A 22-year-old French woman whose blood-drained body was found in an abandoned church in northern Italy's uh, Iosta Valley over the weekend has been had been looking for a haunted house believed to contain ghosts. She told, might have found it. She told family members about her plans before leaving. Police believe the victim could have been attempting to carry out a TikTok stunt, adding that her death could be related to a ghost hunting competition being played in France on social media. Uh, the other working theories are that it was a consented murder or sacrifice or an attempt to carry out a social media prank in the de uh, deconstructed, deconsecrated church. Uh, police are still searching for a young man who was seen with her. There are also two other missing persons cases in the area which police say could be related. That's mm. terrifying. But yeah, that is very terrifying. According to a spokesman, the victim and a male friend had been seen in the area dressed like vampires. A witness interviewed by police say the young woman was pale and emaciated and the man had dark hair and olive skin. Uh, the witness told police investigators uh, that uh, she looked like a walking corpse. I, so if you have French vampires, and the classic line is, I don't drink wine, French vampires got to drink wine, right? I would think so. Yeah. Uh, the dead woman, whose name has not been released, had been stabbed with what investigators say was a camping knife and she had bled to death. Uh, oh she God. also had two gunshots to her neck and one to her abdomen that police say had been inflicted after she died. Some of the blood uh, blood had been uh, scraped off her floor, off of the floor and removed from the crime scene. There were no signs of a struggle. Police say they found a package of pink marshmallows and some groceries purchased at a local store near her body and she was wearing beige leggings and a sweatshirt under a long, dark coat. Long, dark coat. Uh, the woman had no documents or cell phone on her when a resident discovered her decomposing body. That's that is very freaky. Messed up. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's go to something totally different than that. How about this one? Arguing that he was not subject to arrest, a Florida man told police that he was allowed to be drunk and disorderly and sit naked in a trash can on a public sidewalk if he wanted to. <laughs> you boys should bone up on the law. St. Petersburg cops allege that Wiley James Weeks... Wiley James Weeks. ...was intoxicated, unsteady on his feet and smelled of booze when they discovered him late Saturday evening in an, on a downtown street. Weeks was extricated... Sands clothes from a corner trash can <laughs> and arrested for disorderly intoxication and resisting an officer without violence. In addition to claiming that he could not be punished for his take on Oscar the Grouch, Weeks said he did not have to provide officers with his name or demographics. Weeks yesterday pleaded guilty to both counts and was fined $520. His rap sheet is overflowing with theft, disorderly conduct, panhandling, criminal mischief, and other misdemeanor convictions. Did he stay near the Days Inn and St. Pete? Oh, my God. I'm sure he was right around the corner. <laughs> One of the prior busts uh, came after weeks, and a male friend were spotted drunk and naked on a Tampa street after they exited a bar. Uh, the duo told cops that they thought, quote, it would be funny if they stripped off their clothes. Okay. Uh, it probably was. Yeah. In, that, in that area, yeah, that's probably what's going on. One last story. Um, in California, authorities in Pasadena are searching for suspects who stole over a dozen vintage 1920s-era bronze streetlight poles wow. between March 29th and April the 21st. The historic poles... Valued at over $1,600 each, were forcibly removed from their foundations by using cars and chains to drag them away. Uh, Everyone loves streetlights. Uh, there are lots of heavy streetlights. <laughs> no one will ever be able to steal these. 
Police said in the last four days, uh, they had had 11 of them stolen. 11. And uh, despite the thieves' efforts, evidence such as rusty chains in uh, uh, that was uh, tethered to one pole was left behind. Residents uh, reported seeing people trying to steal the poles and prompted concerns about safety and security in the neighborhood. So they're urging people to come forward with information, but they're stealing these light poles. That's crazy. And so they're probably melting them down or trying yeah, to. Maybe so. And that is all that I have in the Bizarre File for you this morning. All right, it's uh, about 10.13, so you got roughly two minutes left to enter. The word plentiful for your chance of winning $1,000. This is a courtesy of Good Money It. It's brought to you by McLaughlin Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. So get on that now. The word is plentiful. We'll take a break. We'll give more stuff away, man. We got a lot. We're going to get to the lesson question, trash and music news. Stay with us. That's why we moved around. Always here, Viagra. Yes. In that refrain, the killers on 93.3 WMMR. It's Mr. Brightside. Uh, 1022, Friday morning. No sad bro, even though the sky is crying, at least here in Bella Kim, where we're getting some rain. It's going to be off and on today. It looks and nasty, though. Yeah, it does look kind of ugly, but it's supposed to be wrapping up in a little while, from what I understand, and then we're going to have cloudy skies, windy. Uh, I have about 64. Tomorrow is cooler and very windy. Yes, it's the case. Yeah, high 57. So tomorrow's kind of, you know. eh. oh, But then Sunday looks good. Nah. 73 and partly cloudy. Monday looks 75, mostly sunny. By Tuesday and Wednesday, like, we're pushing 80 degrees. Uh, listen, so we'll Sick. we'll take the loss for the for these couple of days and get it next week. Excellent. Yep, yep, yep. It's coming. All right. Uh, today's lesson question. We are going to give away a pair of tickets to rain. Oh. We were just talking about rain. Oh, the tribute to the Beatles. It's crazy. And uh, that show is going to be May 10th at the Miller Theater. The question, we're going back to the 6 o'clock hour, going early here. What kind of food did Prince William and Kate Middleton's mom <laughs> order at the pub? <laughs> 215-263-WMMR. What kind of food did Prince William and Kate Middleton's mom order at the pub. 215-263-WMMR. If you know, you need to call us right now. The trash business is a gold mine. 93.3 WMMR with Preston and Steve's Hollywood Trash. All right, we got stories from Steve. Let's get them. What's up, man? Yes, Kourtney Kardashian posting an Instagram video of her drinking a cup of her own breast milk claiming it's a cold remedy. Later in the video, she makes a Courtney Boilermaker by dropping in a shot glass filled with her own piss. Hey! TMZ saying O.J. Simpson's inner circle was aware of his impending death and clarified his final wishes with them. Apparently, O.J. was determined to pass along all the information he's gathered from his decades-long search for Nicole Brown's murderer, which he kept on half a post-it note. <laughs> oh, my God. And finally, Peru dis, uh, disputing British claims that their 111-year-old resident is the oldest man alive, claiming Peruvian Marcelino Tolentino is 124 years old. To be completely accurate, Marcelino is not as much a man, but rather a blister with a single pubic hair. Mm. <laughs> and that's your Hollywood track. We will see if you know the answer to this. What kind of food did Prince William and Kate Middleton's mom order while at the pub? 215-263-WMMR. Uh, first caller up was Justin, so we're going to go to him. Hey, Justin, morning, dude. Hey, good morning, guys. All right, Justin, what kind of food did Prince William and Kate Middleton's mom order at the pub? Slappy Joe! Yes! Slappy Joe! Hang on a second, Justin. You got yourself a pair of tickets for rain. A tribute to the Beatles, Friday, May 10th, Miller Theater, and note for note precision, mind-blowing performance. It transports you back to the iconic eras of Sgt. Pepper and Magical Mystery Tour, along with all of your favorite hits. Four shows, May 9th to the 10th, and tickets and information at EnsembleArtsPhilly.org. No. Preston and Steve's Music News on 93.3 WMMR. Yeah! 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 Brought to you by Horizon Services. Dust, pollen, and dander are in the air. Horizon Services can help avoid costly breakdowns and clear away allergens. Schedule an AC tune-up now, and they'll also schedule a free fall tune-up. Uh, book at horizonservices.com slash WMMR. Well, Sammy Hagar and Palms Casino Resort are hosting a grand opening celebration next month for Sammy's Island, a tropical poolside oasis inspired by the Rock and Roll Hall of Famers music. Uh, the event goes down on May 17th. 
This sounds like the um, they're sort of doing the hard rock sort of beach island thing that they have in the back, the famous setup that they have. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and it will feature a live performance by Hagar's tribute band, a tri Hagar tribute band, Red Voodoo, while guests sip on tropical cocktails and tequila flights. Sammy is really trying to get that, or has been for a long time, that Jimmy Buffett type of... Yeah. Uh, thing and he he's got a version of it. He's doing it with a, a fair level of success. Yeah, yeah. He, there's actually precedent. Speaking of that, these these cameras, there's, there's a couple of them. And uh, the one at the Hard Rock, there is a um, there's a closed circuit system, and obviously a lot of the quote unquote beautiful people hang out by the pool day. So it's it's sort of must watching for a lot of people. Their streaming numbers are huge. Sammy's Island officially opens to the public at 10 a.m. Uh, the same day, offering cabanas, bungalows, and lily pads for purchase. Mm -hmm. uh, Hagar's latest hotspot will open daily from uh, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, throughout pool season, hosting live poolside events and performances by top DJs every Saturday through Monday. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Sammy's going to be honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame on April 30th. Oh, that's cool. Yep, and is gearing up for his uh, The Best of All Worlds 2024 tour where he'll be joined by Michael Anthony, Jason Bonham, and Joe Satriani. I was chatting with some friends last night about uh, bands that do cruises, like the Kiss Cruise, you know? Yes. What other bands? Like, at 311, I think, has done one. Weezer has done one. Weezer, that's right, yeah. yeah. And, and I, I couldn't come up with um Matchbox with 20 and the Goo Goo Dolls. I only know wow. that because my uh, hairstylist, Jackie, went on that. They have to be such money-making ventures for those bands and for the cruise lines as so well. So you're saying we should do a Preston Steve oh, cruise. We, we that's should. what I was going to say, yeah. That'd be awesome. If we could do that, absolutely. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll let's uh, let's Daisy Chain on the Kiss Cruise. Can we? Uh, yeah. Can we bring Jackie and have him dress have in that old to. time? We have to. Yeah. All right. Yeah, he dresses uh, Isaac. Uh, yeah. Oh no. Were you going to say his old timey uh, bathing suit? suit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bathing yeah. suit. I like or that. Everybody loves going topside <laughs> for the pool. Yeah, that's uh, Jackie. <laughs> this interesting looking young lady is quite the stalk. <laughs> that's a man. That's Jackie Bam Bam. That's a man. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, CBS is set to air a momentous Billy Joel concert special entitled The 100th Billy Joel, live at Madison Square Garden, the greatest arena run of all time. And it's coming up this Sunday at 9 p.m. Uh, fans of The Piano Man can look forward to watching his historic 100th consecutive show filmed on March 28th. Uh, it is a highlight of Billy's ongoing residency, which is slated to conclude in July, and of course, he holds a record for selling out Madison Square Garden more frequently than any artist in history. I bet you, you know, I don't think he could have foreseen, unless he just was so confident that he thought that he could get that run. I mean, the the outlandish thought that you could sell out that many shows yeah. that frequently. Yeah. It's just amazing. I wonder how many of the same people right. go to all these shows that are just, you know, right. diehards. Because that is just... It's not like... It blows my mind, and I'm a huge fan of his, but I, I it's that seems like... I yeah. mean, think about, a, like, a Broadway show, like... like, like um, um, Cats. Cats that sells out, or... or uh, um, Hamilton. Hamilton, yeah. that was selling out consistently. But that's a theater size audience. Yeah. Yeah. It's not Madison Square Garden. You know what, man? He could go do The Sphere. We were talking about artists yes. that, that would be good, uh, that yeah. would be mm -hmm. a great show. His... Music conjures up so much imagery. Yes, uh, that you could do a. We didn't a start the fire. Would wonderful be. presentation. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, so the special holds a distinction of being Billy's first concert broadcasted on network television, adding to a series of concert specials formerly shown on premium cable channels and PBS, including the notable Billy Joel live at Yankee Stadium from 1990. So that's coming up on Sunday. Should be pretty cool. Um, we have some things going on here at MMR you need to be aware of musically this weekend. The featured MM artist is The Offspring. Our MMRBQ headliners are celebrating the 30th anniversary of their breakthrough third studio album, Smash. And each time one of our weekend jocks plays an Offspring song, caller number 10 is going to win a pair of MMRBQ tickets. Nice. Join us on Saturday, September 21st. So listen all weekend. Also, uh, the event with Nick McElwain is coming up on Sunday. And there are two ways for you to hear Pearl Jam's new album, Dark Matter, before it's released. Uh, the in-store listening party with Nick on Sunday, which is going to be at the record shop in Phoenixville. And uh, the global theater theatrical experience with Pierre on Tuesday the 16th at a few area theaters. And uh, Pierre's got a chance for you to win tickets uh, to the event. So make sure you listen up, because that is... I'm afraid that maybe Casey's going to show up to one of those. On the way. <laughs> um, I'll see. Okay. All right, get back to me. <laughs> 
And as we get ready to wrap up music news, I'd like to give away some concert tickets. I will take callers 20 and 21 and give tickets to Deep Purple, celebrating 50 years of smoke on the water with Yes Whoa. performing as well. Friday, August 30th at Freedom Mortgage Pavilion. 215-263-WMMR. The tickets go on sale 30 minutes ago. Uh, so you can go to Ticketmaster.com or WMMR.com and all the information is right there. But we'll take callers 20 and 21 and you get to go to the show. So call us right now. I have a different type of caller that I want to go to. Somebody who was on hold. And we have Julia oh, yeah. who's joining us. Hi there, Julia. Hi, good morning. It. Good morning to see you, Julia. You just kind of called us out of the blue here. What's the haps? I did. I just won a thousand dollars. She did it. She did it. Another thousand dollar winner. That's a beautiful thing. Julia, tell us about you. Where are you from? What do you do? Stuff like that. I am. I live in Chemung, New Jersey. I am a nurse. And I am just in shock right now that I won. I and every single time. Well, you know what? It'll make it a little easier to know that you're going to get a thousand dollars. Yeah. Are you working this uh, weekend, Julia? I'm not. I'm not. I have a. I have a nice nine to five nursing job. Oh, I was curious. Uh, I didn't know you. if you did like the twelve hour shifts or anything crazy like that, but. No, not anymore. Thank goodness. Good for you. Nine to five, Monday through Friday. Well, for all the wonderful work that you've done throughout the years, we are going to add on a thousand dollars to that. So, congratulations to you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Our pleasure. We love you, Julia. Everybody. Yay! And she won a thousand dollars courtesy of McLaughlin Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. It is good money. It's and this is only the second stop of five that we will make throughout the course of the day. So, do not miss your next chance to win coming up with Pierre. At noon, we'll take a break. We'll wrap up the show, give away our Word of the Week prize when we return. Stay with us. Okay, what would you have in mind? Uh, you know the song that they played from Casino Royale, the James Bond? Oh, you know my name, right. Pierre? You know my name, correct? Yes, Pierre Robert. Yes. I know you. Well, I listen to you every day. No, 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 no. That's the name of the song. I know the name of the song. No, I have no clue the name of the song. I'm sorry. No, that's the name of the I wasn't asking you if you knew me. I was asking you if you knew the name of the song. <laughs> the song? No, I don't know. It's, uh, it's from the Casino Royale. No, it's called You Know My Name. Who's on third? <laughs> It's called You Know My Name. I know your name. I don't know the name of the song, though. I'm the sorry. song is called You... <laughs> Never mind. What is your name? <laughs> my name? My name's Chris. Chris, all right, Chris. Have a great day, and thank you for the call. Thank you. And the song is called You Know My Name. You Know My... Oh, that's the name of the song. Now that's we're song. cooking with gas. That's right. Have a great day, buddy. Thank you. Bye-bye. No, you're Pierre Robert. I listen to you every day. <laughs> God, that's so good. Oh, Never not funny. One, one of the best ever. It was as priceless. And Chris, um, we played it for him. And uh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, uh, and we played it for him once here. And then he took it home and played it for his wife. And the next time I interviewed him on the phone, he said, my wife and I, it was like yeah. uh, almost a year later, he said, my wife and I were talking about that phone call. <laughs> and she said she thinks it was faked. I go, dude, I would never do that to you. Yeah. And he goes, I know you wouldn't. And I told her, it's not faked. They don't do that at that yeah. station. Yeah. And she, and we had an argument about it. And then she goes, you know what? I think you're right. Yeah. And um, I mean, he remembered it all that time later. And it's, you never tracked that guy down either, right? The guy who called in. No, his name is Chris. Yeah. It's like the Jesus lady. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a, the drunk lady on the lawn called me Jesus. I never did find out who she was. But Your I, name is Jesus. But you I look can't, like Jesus. I can't believe this guy never got back because he loses you every day. <laughs> yeah, Pierre he, Robert. Might, he may have been embarrassed and been like, I am Maybe. not he's coming such, forward. He's such a sweet, genuine, you yeah, can tell him to call. Awesome. He's a big fan. He's listening. That's he wants great. to hear the song. It's, but, it's so so unique and, and authentic. It was just a one of those lovely, innocent, yeah. Yeah. you know... Uh, you know, mistake compounding upon mistake kinds of uh, things that can happen, and in fact, do happen all the time in regular life. Yeah, and and it was I was going, thank you, gods of the phone. <laughs> yeah. That was an amazing call. 
It's like that time that that guy and his friend Tommy were going around selling brake pads. I remember that, yeah. yeah. I mean, and they wanted to hear that song, uh, Cleveland Rocks. Uh, and, I, you know, I played it because oh, so uh, I'm moments. a effing moron. No, 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 no. So many great moments, man. I had, so, I had one guy call me and goes, dude, we're listening to you on an aircraft carrier. I go, are you kidding? He said, no, I'm a U.S. Navy fighter pilot. I go, really? And then he gives Tom Cruise his name. And, uh, it, and, man, man. and it flew right over my head. Uh, I go, oh, excellent, man. Thank you. It's so cool to know that the, you know, the fighter, fighter pilots are listening. Yeah. And then the text line lit up, moron, 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 moron. Listen, there's no, there's no way you can be, uh, you're just, you're fielding calls. Everything. There's no way you can know every friggin' reference. Well, you guys would, but um, I, but I. Well, there's I'm, six of us here as a yeah. brain for us to eventually <laughs> figure it out, you no, know. I found it amusing, <laughs> uh, but then I. I told people don't do that. <laughs> Fair enough. See, like it happens to us all the time, but you do you you get embarrassed. So maybe that person on the other line just Fair was enough. like, you know what, I'm not going to become a thing and tell people who I am. All it's right. possible. His name is Chris. <laughs> well, uh, real quickly, I'd like to thank Tom Papa for being on the yeah. show this morning. He's playing in Reading tonight at the Sundunter Arena. Sundunter. And uh, you can go to wmmr.com to get the ticket information. But it was great to talk to him. Um, shall we do the letter, sir? Yes. All right, here we go. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Now, the Daily Letter. And the Preston and Steve show is brought to you today by the letter. L as in library. All right, now we have a word, and we'll take caller number uh, six at 215-263-WMMR. See if you know what that word is, and we have a prize associated with it, so get on board. Call us right now. Uh, what's shaking today on the Snow Sabro Friday? Oh, so much. We've got a workforce block set, include the Stones, also 311 for Nick's birthday, not Nick McElwain, mm -hmm. Nick Hexum. Uh, and uh, we've got Aerosmith because that show is on sale. We'll have a pair of tickets to give away for it and a block to play. And more of the Pearl Jam Global Theatrical Experience to give away. And so it's going to be a fun day to hang with us. Excellent. And, of course, you've got the uh, money to give away, Oh, right, too. right, right. The good, good money at... Good money at, I'm sorry, at yeah. noon, and then again at 3, and then again at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Yeah, we had a couple winners today. Was Everybody's all excited. It's yeah. a Friday vibe. It's Perfect. Fantastic. Done very well. I haven't had one. Uh, let's get you one today. All right. All right we're going to go to the phones. We're going to call number 6, and it's Eric. Who's Eric! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Eric. How you doing, bud? I think I'm doing much better now. All right, well, give us the word, and we'll let you know. What's up? Email. Great day in the <laughs> All right, Eric, we are going to send you with this really cool prize. Casey and I both have this, and we love it. We take it to the beach, but you can take it pretty much anywhere. It's called the Incredible Shift Travel Table. I'm also going to give you four Tommy Bahama beach chairs to go along with that, so you are set to entertain this season at the shore, wherever you may be. All right, buddy? Sweet. Thank you, guys. You got it. Hang on, Eric. We'll get your information. Don't forget, the table has a sturdy uh, tabletop with large cup holders, a patent-pending beach umbrella with a swivel arm that allows it to rotate 360 degrees, and their unique anchor mat that makes it safe for the beach even on the windiest of days. Check them out at shiftoutdoors.com, by the way. A thank you to our sponsors. Preston and Steve Show brought to you today by Duncan. The Preston and Steve Show runs on Duncan. Also, Acme Fresh Foods, local flavors, and Trinity Rehab locations all over trinity-rehab.com. I just want to point out, I did the entire show without my glasses. Yay! Wow. Wow. Great and job. I read wow. everything. I so, can do that. Thank you. One of the masters, yes. Glasses. Please. Put his glasses Put on his glasses. Uh, next week on our program, too much stuff to even, we don't have enough time yeah. to mention here, but it's going to be great. Guarantee and more mm, chances to win money and all that good stuff. That's it. We're done. Rage on. Have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you later, gang. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.